Let's run it. It's FT Live, but it's also Scotty Braun and AJ Przinsky with your full-on hurricane coverage coming up over the next few days. <laughs> AJ will be reporting live from whatever city needs him in the Florida area. I am uh, the new Jim Cantori. So <laughs> Which city are you here? going to, Jim? I am here. Well, he is at Cedar Key. I'm thinking about maybe that's a good spot. As long as it just jogs a little bit east of where we are, which it stays staying pretty safe right now, looking from mm-hmm. the television and all the forecast models from the Hurricane Center, Scott, you're going to get to experience your first hurricane here That's in Orlando. That's not true. Oh, in, in Orlando. Orlando, yes. I've been in South Florida for some action, but um, I'm excited for that. Anyway, Kratzy, good to see you from long distance again um, after a little hangout in Philadelphia. That was a fun little last-minute trip. Yeah, we had four four days to get three days together. It was nice. Oh yeah, I forgot. Why? I was in AC with him, and then also in Pennsylvania. Kip, how you doing, man? Are you uh, watching your back now after Acuna shit yesterday? You want to get into it? If you want to jump right into it, let's get into it. I, I would love to hear your thoughts first. So let's do our baseballer viral hit of the week. And as Kip's talking us through it, we can show you what happened. Our friends at baseball are obviously posting this right after it happens. And we're getting, we're going to give you multiple angles. First off, this is kind of the field view of one fan coming at Ronald. And after there's two or three security guards just kind of hugging the one fan, another one comes and essentially semi decks him, Kip. And then there was still action with another fan who kind of jumped back into the seats. So to me, it almost. Not almost. It seems pre-coordinated too to have multiple people here involved. So did they? Did they the come thing. in from? Did they come in from different sides, or did they enter the field from the same spot? I think did different have- spots. Do we know if they came from? I think it was different I spots. I think they came from different angles, and we'll show you different angles too. But this is the perfect show for like what you would do, how MLB security works, how the fuck this wow. happens. The second guy comes in hot, where I think Acuna puts out a little stiff arm once you see him coming from the bottom of the screen here. Normally, you only see this like in soccer games. Yeah, right there with like Messi or Ronaldo, the guys that come onto the field to take pictures with them. Uh, I think Acuna said, or the teammate said, like, the first guy didn't really impose a threat, so that's why it took longer. It, it, it's kind of irrelevant to me at that point. Get off the field. You're not supposed to be there. I don't like, I don't like it. Um, it's, there, it's, look at him. It, does, it doesn't look like a sane person. It's just for a picture. If you want, if you're doing that much energy and that much attached to a guy just to get a picture with someone, there's something a little wrong with you in my mind. That dude looks like a rabid dog, the yeah. one that's being picked up and flailing. I mean, to me, that adds crap. It's not okay. No, it's not okay. That's like, to me, that's got to add to the criminal charges. That dude was not compliant by any means. He was not a peaceful protester. I don't know what the criminal charges are going to be, but it is going to be fine. Jail time. They're never going to go to another big league game. It is, that's an easy one, but. You know, now all the memes are going to come out. That dude in the white shirt that came out second, you know, it's going to be like Mookie Betts' face on it as he's running running down. And then you see Acuna, who got who got deked by the whole the whole uh, security guard was on the ground and he was just crawling behind him. The middle school, like, crawl behind somebody and then someone pushes him over. That's what happened to Acuna <laughs> table, there. T- tabletop. Table t- there's a name for it? Yeah. The tabletop. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a small, it's a smaller guy's moves when we can't get you down to the ground <laughs> on our own. We need teamwork. It's bad news. It's bad news. Because AJ, AJ's got all, something. AJ's well, why got is there something. no – Why? first of all, the security guards took forever to get there. I give Acuna yeah. a ton of credit because if some dude comes up to me and I'm on the field and, and they start hugging me, I'm like, bro, get the fuck off me. Aren't you like – I'm like not letting the first guy get to me. I'm what like, do you dude, do? what are you doing? But, you don't but even he's coming in hot. I don't care. I'm st- I'm like stop. Like I'm like are you him. stop like a I'm pushing with a shove him. forward? I'm getting the fuck. I'm not letting him dude take a picture of me on the field with me. 
Like, Akuna's really? way too nice. And then second of all, where were his teammates? Like, Juan Yepes, who was the bullpen catcher, was the Jose. first guy out there. Jose Yepes. Jose Yepes. Geez, sorry. Excuse me. I play, I know Yepes, too. Uh, yeah, he was the first one that was out there. And, and we're, Pilar, I guess, was the – and then Albies, I think, came out. But why aren't they sprinting out but there like, and decking yeah. him? That's your And then the second guy possession. comes, and, and they tackle Acuna? If I'm the Braves, I am not okay with this. I mean, these people need to go to jail for a long like, – you can't run on the field. If I, I've never in my life have I ever gone to a sporting event and said – actually, I can't say that because I did it once, but I got away with it. What? But <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I was probably not sober. I was at Scott's rave party. Um, I didn't see you. But, we need to uh, hear about this. Uh, I just don't understand why people jump on the field, especially fans. Attention usually, but this see this smelled different, Kip, because of the aggressive approach. Like you'll see someone run with their shirt off, laughing, whatever. Sometimes even like kind of collapse or try to run away. Like these guys were were flailing and not cooperative once the security guards got a hold of them. You could be drunk. You could scream whatever you want at us. Uh, once you come onto the field, you're blurring the lines. You're crossing the proverbial line uh, where it's just not all right. And I think Acuna was calm. So I think that's why teammates weren't over there right away because they're like, oh, he's not in jeopardy. But it also doesn't happen much. So they're probably like, what the hell's going on themselves? Uh, and kind of just monitoring and watching the situation. But Acuna is in every right of his own to literally throw a haymaker to any one of those guys if he wanted to. There's I'm, no, there's there's one two things that I have to say about the whole situation in spring training. They tell us, do not engage these people. Yeah, do not try do not. to run over there. Do not try to save your teammates. That I don't know if I agree with or not because they're like they might be holding a knife, whatever it is. But if you sit there and you think somebody's coming at you, you have every right to just yeah like, defend them. yourself. And the boys, the boys down in Hotlanta, the guys that are the the security guards, those linebackers. Dudes, yes, they're all ex football <laughs> players. They wear their cleats. Colorado dudes were just rolling out there. Hey, we'll get out there whenever we get out there. Atlanta, this ain't happening, especially to an Atlanta player. But it's definitely not happening to anybody because those dudes talk about it. They live for it. There's guys sitting in the bullpen, like please. There was one guy that was always down the left field line in the old stadium. He would be like, please, let yeah. somebody come out. <laughs> let somebody come out. He'd, he'd pull his cleats up and show his cleats. He's like, I'm going to get them. They lived to hit somebody. You got to have one athlete on each side of the field for security. Right. It, it, security, I mean, they totally missed the boat here. Yeah, it was just They were too slow. Long. They were kind of standing, stalling. Also, I'm like, where are the cuffs? I mean, remember Max Muncy was on with us <laughs> earlier this year. Innocent dude who was stupid because he went on the field, but proposing down on one knee gets destroyed and I think cuffed right away. There's no cuffs here. It was very strange. And to me, this is one of those moments where I think the league needs to say, we need to redo this for a second. We need to reset and look at our protocols. Everyone should have the same protocol at every ballpark. It should not be different. It's players. It's the field. Yes, every ballpark's made uniquely and states are different, but it should be the same concept. There should be plenty of people that are ready to go and deck people and floor them and cuff them. <laughs> my two my two favorite ones I've ever well, – I've seen three good ones of this other than just idiots running on the field. My my three favorite ones that I've ever seen were one we were in Tampa and a dude ran out top of our dugout and ripped his pants off and was his tidy whities and ran around the field. Front flipped over Wa Ron Washington and I, and then they got him at second base and they, they drug him through – they, they took care of him pretty good. Yeah. He got what he deserved. There was a guy in New York one time. We were playing the Yankees, and the dude jumped off the top and landed on the net behind home plate. We had to stop the game because he was on the net. He was caught in the net? He was on the net because they used to have a net over the fans behind home plate for balls. Yeah. So he jumped. He bet his friends, and he jumped onto the boom, onto the net. And they had to, we had to stop the game, and he didn't know where to go. He knew he couldn't come to the field because he couldn't get down. So he went up the press box, and it was like, Four NYPD dudes like grabbing him. They beat the crap out of him as, as they're dragging him up. There's video of it if you Google it. And then the third one was there in Kansas City. In the Kansas City, they have that hard ass rubber around for the warning track. They used to. I think it's dirt now. But they used to have this hard ass like rubber. Dude jumped down, landed, broke his leg. 
couldn't run. He's laying on the ground, ah, screaming. <laughs> Stop the game, bring an ambulance out, put his oh ass on gosh. the stretcher, <laughs> drive him off. Like those dudes, they got what they deserve. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, and and I'm, I guess, go ahead, Kip. I said I got only one favorite one, and it was in the 2016 playoffs in Toronto, just like your your hockey city. Ninth inning, uh, we're about to eliminate them, I think, to go to the World Series. And this guy comes out, jeans around his knees, and I, you couldn't hear anybody. It, it's like he absolutely did what he accomplished. He, he wanted to, like, rev up the crowd, and they were going insane for him. Like, his everything was out. Everything was showing. And this guy was just having a blast. And it was the loudest I think I've ever heard uh, a stadium. And you're literally, like, on defense, you're like, Oh shit! Did he just do this? Like, did he actually just rally the the Blue Jays right now and um, got tackled? And it was just hilarious because you're watching the guards try to contain this guy with his pants down and trying to pull him up while he's kicking and screaming. And it was just kind of fun to watch. That's my favorite. That's good. I mean, I'm wondering, Kratz, what the security protocol is with the players. So you said they tell you, you know, don't get involved. Although I would counter, like you said, with okay, well, what if the security setup sucks? I'm going to go get my teammate, my my star, right? I mean, he's one of the best players in the sport, and there's multiple people attacking him. I mean, somebody should be the enforcer. Kevin Pillar's pretty fast. He could probably deck some dudes. He played football. Yep, he's like just staring. It's a bad, it's, it's a bad situation. Also, just the fact that they were hugging him, and they didn't immediately – Give him, like, elbow to the face, put him on the ground. Why are they hugging him? Well, why are you protecting him? You worry that he's going to, like, sue you afterwards? It's on the field. A, is that a third guy that was on the field? Too yeah, I love that. I love that he's yeah. back in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm out. <laughs> but, Kratz, like, what it – and for all you guys to kick around, what, what do they say to you? So, what do you know about, you know, MLB security and how it's set up? It's different in every stadium. Like I said, like, the guys – I, I don't remember the people in Colorado, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but I remember specifically the people in Atlanta. And they – there was one time somebody jumped on the field when they used to do the, like, hammer and bucket and paintbrush race before they did the freeze. And a dude jumped on the field, and the guy down the left field line was so pissed he didn't get over there in time. He's like, <laughs> it's like that's terrible. He's like, the rest of the game, he was just sitting on the bench. He was stewing. He was just like, man. It's like that was my chance. I would totally got that guy, but I I don't know. They don't they don't tell us. The biggest thing is they say let the security let the security take care of it. But if you watch it next time you go to a game, just take a look at the people at security. It's usually right at the gate that you can get out onto the field, down the left field line, down the right field line, maybe one by the dugout on each side. But it's not the most. I mean, it's not people that are given given a good hit. Like the big fella who came out there, I'm glad he didn't hit the guy right away because he was he was clenched on the Acuna and he would have had to take Acuna and the other guy out. So, I mean, I think it was kind of, the guy was kind of using Acuna as like a, like a body shield. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, as players, we should know what the regulations are, except they just tell us to stay away. Listen, there's someone that's done this before. And done got, what? Got away with it. Oh, so God, tell us about good. it. Yeah, no, what do you no, got? I mean, what is this? Just, All right, so yeah, You're so Florida, fast. Georgia. Florida, Georgia is a time, okay, football game. 2000, I believe it was 2010, nine or ten. You had a visor on. Probably, <laughs> probably. The only, the only time my wife ever went to a game, she ain't been back since. Save some <laughs> um, girls for the rest of us. We yeah we were we were uh, we probably were drinking and he started at like seven in the morning and the game's at three thirty and I was with Toby Hall and my wife and his wife and the game goes to overtime and I think it was two thousand ten and I said I go and I know all the Gator people and we're on the we're in the, we're in the first row behind the Gator bench and I said I looked at Toby and I go if Florida wins I'm go I'm rushing the field and he's like you won't you know. You won't. I'm like, yeah, well. He's like, you get in trouble. I'm like, dude, I know all the Florida people. They'll let me go. Interception. Georgia gets the ball in overtime first. Florida intercepts it, and they run it all the way back, right? And everyone thinks the game's over. Jump. So I'm like, here I go. Jump over the wall. Boom. And I run. 
and then like, oh, tackle to the one yard line. So I'm now like between the bench and the field. And I'm like, shit, <laughs> what do I do? And I turn around and I'm like, I'm just going to jump back in the fence. I turn around, dude, the fence is like 10 or 12 foot high. And I'm like, oh, hell, luckily there was a oh, table look. there. So I jumped on the table and Toby grabbed me and pulled me back into my oh, seat. Oh, shit. And nobody saw nobody you? Nobody said a word. Wow. Man, you're quicker than I thought. I was like, you're stolen base my, 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 wife, my, wife said, my wife goes, I'll never go to that game with you again. I'm like, get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I love you, dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's my one time. My How many career work. stolen bases? 13. 15. Damn. I was, 15. I you're faster you're, than you think. That's right. Should have let me go more, Ozzy. Yep. Damn. Hey. All right. Good for you. You got away with it. Yep. All right. So question for the poll. And you can scan the QR code on your screen or hit up watchstadium.com slash file ter- territory. Oh, wait, before we get to that, real quick. I jumped the gun. I'm quicker than AJ. Baseballer.com, BSBLR is the spot. Check out some merch and also props to them for putting that post up right away and obviously seeing all the fan reaction to it who were mostly thinking the same things that we were thinking, like what the fuck's going on. So that brings us to the poll then. Watchstadium.com slash file territory to play along. What should happen to fans who did what they did to Acuna yesterday? A, jail. B, banned for life. And I'm just leaving that in general. Banned, could be banned from anything. But no, banned from the ballpark. C, huge fine. D, all of the above. Have fun. I feel like we can all agree with this one. Whit Merrifield joining us soon on the show. And Ken Rosenthal later. So what is going on with the Rangers? And this is a fascinating discussion because here's a team that was dominant for the first half. Even when Corey Siegel went down, they've had a great run. Now they're missing Josh Young, and that has hurt them, no question. They were missing Jonah Heim for a time. He finally is getting back on track, it seems, offensively. But this team is not the same offensive team that we have seen for much of the year. They've lost 9 of 10. They're in second place for the first time since April. And one reason that they're in this position is their offense. It is not performing at the same level. And it's funny. In mid-June, I quoted a rival executive anonymously saying that the Rangers' performance with runners in scoring position was, quote, laugh out loud unsustainable, unquote. And the usual fans squawked on Twitter. Yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, at the time... The Rangers' batting average with runners in scoring position was 322. 322. It was 34 points higher than the next closest team. And yes, it was laugh out loud, unsustainable. And now we're seeing it. In this 10 game run, in which they've gone 1 and 9, batting average with runners in scoring position, 110. 110. This is. Baseball evening out. This is what happens in the game. You can't sustain a 322 batting average with RISP all season long. And now back to foul territory. Back on FT Live on Stadium, Braun Pierzynski, Kratz, Kipnis, and Blue Jays All-Star Whit Merrifield back with us. Whit, how you doing, man? And did you see the Acuna clip from yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, doing good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was something. Dude, your thoughts? So, for us, we just kicked it around for the last 10 minutes. I mean, you had multiple fans going after him. So, have you ever been in a spot like that? Like, even in South Carolina days where someone – hops the fence, and if you were Acuna, would you have stiff-armed him and maybe floored him so that he's not hugging you and using you as a human shield? Yeah, uh, it's fun to sit back and think what you would do in that situation. I'm a football ex-football player, um, so I, you know, I, I can think about what I would like to do if someone kind of came at me. I've never been a part of anything like that. I've seen streakers and stuff like that, but never somebody come up to – player on the field with the purpose of hugging him. I don't know what he was trying to do, t- taking a picture with him. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting. 
ex football player. So, I mean, come on. That was like a humble brag. Like, do you even feel like you need to say that? Because last time we said that you yeah. were a smaller guy. Well, I, I, I guess I guess I was saying that like I I, I love football and I love. I would like to have the opportunity to spear somebody on in the outfield um, now that I'm uh, a bigger man than I was when I was uh, when I was a man. Yeah, you are. I feel like I'd have to, be, be careful. I wouldn't, have, because, I wouldn't have to dominate it so much, you know. Hey, be careful with because there's going to be like some fan that hears this and he's going to say, "No, right, let's." I know people are stupid out there. The people are not the smartest people in the world about stuff like this. And it's like. I'm going to take him on. There's going to be some dude that's going to get – he's going to run on the field and he's going to get, like, in a three-point stance and be like, let's go. And we're nope. going to say, all right, well, fuck you. I am playing left field tonight. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's going to bitch is let's go. No, it's in Toronto. They're in Toronto, though. Not, no, that's the whole thing. They don't even – Toronto, they don't, they don't really – they have different football up there. They wouldn't – yeah. 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 They have some hockey guys, though, that like to do stuff like that just, just for fun. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, like, so one fan – great. One one fan said, um, AJ Early said, players are also probably scared to react because of the suspensions, like when the NBA suspended all the Pacers players, costing Indiana a shot at the championship. That's different. I remember the malice at the palace. That was, that was different. incredibly different. Dude, and with all due the respect, stands. yeah, they went in the stands and started full on brawling with fans. And I remember it was a Jermaine O'Neal just like absolutely smashed a dude in the face on the court. So I think that's very different from a fan or, or multiple fans coming at you to attack you in my mind. I don't think like, do you think players would be afraid to react to a fan if they're coming after them? I feel like that's the one time that you can actually defend yourself. Yeah. I mean, when we have our, our security meeting at the beginning of, of spring training with MLB securities and everything. They always uh, encourage us to avoid any people that come on the field, you know, kind of at all costs. Cause you don't know what they've got, if they've got a knife or a weapon on them or something like that. So, um, they tell us to stay, steer clear of them. So it's that, that's kind of what we're taught to do. And I think, um, that's probably smart. They're not going to know where to get you. Cause they're like, Oh, I'm going to go get wit. Uh, is he playing left? No, not left. I, I got to run to second base. Oh, wait, what, what position is he playing now? Third base. How's it, how's that going? Are you going to, are you going to give it a go now that Chappie's down for a little bit? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they told me yesterday just to kind of take some reps over there and, and be ready in case uh, that was a need. Um, I think I played. I think I played a four or five games there my rookie year. Um, a little bit in the minor leagues, some in college. So it's uh, it's it's hitting in there somewhere. Some of that. Some of those reps. I just gotta... You get more. You get more sore when you play like different positions. You get sore different ways. I was talking to somebody yesterday. Standing at first base, their back, like their lower back starts to tighten up. And he's normally an outfielder. So do you go through that or are you are you a stud? Um the being in the in the outfield on the turf here in Toronto um can can get me a little bit, but um besides that, I mean not really. Wait, what does your uh, pregame routine then look like when you have to prepare for all these positions? How how do you kind of balance or find – how do you judge and balance your time before or during BP where you got to get reps at five different positions? Yeah, at this point in the year, it's, it's a lot more uh, toned down. Um, I like what we do here where we, uh, we do our infield work before BP. So that way, you know – while BP is going on, you don't have to worry about dodging balls uh, while you're trying to say ground balls. So we, we get that stuff done 10 minutes before BP. And uh, so I'll, I'll do that. If I'm playing second base, I'll get out there once a series and get and get my work in. Um, but come late August or early, early September, uh, try to do your best to conserve the energy that you can. So, um, But the third base thing, yeah, I got out there yesterday and, and took uh, – the ground balls for 10 minutes or so and I'll probably do it again um today or tomorrow just to just to kind of make sure I got that throw down uh, it's a longer throw that I'm used to making on the infield so I just got to get comfortable with that comfortable with timing and um at the end of the day you field it and throw it so that's, that's really do, you, what it do, do, do you mostly just prepare with what you're going to be playing that day if you're going to conserve your energy just whichever you're yeah. going to line up for that day yeah, yeah, that's basically what it is. If I'm playing outfield, um, 
really, if I'm playing outfield, I consider it a little bit of a of an off day for me. I just take BP, uh, especially here on the turf. I don't. I try to stay off the turf as much as I can. Uh, so infield is when I get my defensive work. Outfield, I just I just kind of take the hit in that day. Do you do mostly the first day of new series? Like if you're, that's what I would do. I think if you're yeah. outfield or infield, you got a new field. Go check how the wall, how the ball bounces off the wall in the outfield, what the dirt's like at this new place, and kind of get used to it. The first days are usually the most important of the series to get your work in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and really the first days now are, are the days that I'm on the field. Um, at this point, I don't. After the first day, I usually stay in the cage. Um, I don't get on the field for BP. So the first day is when you feel the field out. Um, Get a gauge for where you're playing. Get get your reps in, and then get off your feet. Hey, Wade, uh, I know you're a South Carolina guy. Idalia, the hurricane is on its way. Scott's about to experience his first hurricane Stop in Orlando. Stop saying that. It's I'm, true, but I, it's it's going to hit Florida <laughs> and then it's go up to South Carolina. So does this mean there'll be no more frog stomping from your wife because it'll all be washed away by all the rain that's coming? I hope so. I hope it. Well, we're in North Carolina, so I hope oh, it. Okay. Make, way up there um but no i haven't i haven't i haven't heard about this i followed it uh being up here and i guess the north that family hasn't said much to me about it so i didn't know there was a hurricane coming so this is news to me I yeah it's a, a big one too is yeah, it right it's gonna 125 they're saying when it hits florida what's the name of this one idalia who like, comes idalia? up with these names I don't know, but I didn't realize that AJ is locked in on this thing. Oh, man, I love him. AJ's got every TV <laughs> on the Weather hey. Channel right now. He is, like, looking. Oh, oh, it just went a little. It wobbled. It well, just went a little north, northwest. It wobbled. It wobbled. Yeah, I don't know the play-by-play. -play. That's you. Wobbles. I don't call games anymore, so you got to do that for me. <laughs> People, get into it. People get into that hurricane track and stuff. Um, maybe when I'm done playing, I'll have that much time to, to develop a hurricane track and hobby <laughs> trout <laughs> exactly. there you go hey trout trout loves weather that's his big thing i love weather but yeah. when a hurricane's coming you got to stand back true true i'll tell you hey. what being in the higher leagues yeah. that became a great weatherman and, and trying to figure out when we were going to get hit by rain if we we're going to have a window and uh how like banging it for our game to get banged yeah <laughs> we all got a window Trust me, I'm a trust me. When it doesn't change when you retire, because I'm calling games. I got all I got twelve weather apps on my phone. I'm like this the whole time. Okay, well this app says we got a window. This yeah. app says no. This one says yep. All right, and then you're like oh, and then the other day they canceled it in Cleveland. We were like yeah, just like players. Yeah, we got canceled. We're bad. We can go to dinner. <laughs> dinner night. Yeah, yeah, but then you got a double header. But, Not you know, me. You guys do. I don't yeah, have shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm out of there. Y'all do. <laughs> they don't reschedule the Fox game for the next day. Oh, you're <laughs> saying for TV? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I always said if you could bottle the energy that you have, like, in the shower and after when they say games bang, I w I'm like, if you could bottle that energy, man, dudes would never be tired. But then the like, doubleheader comes the next day. They're like, oh, I'm so yeah. tired. I'm like, dude, remember <laughs> yesterday? You're so excited about this bang. <laughs> That's true. Hey, wait, question for you, because we haven't had you on. I mean, it's a very physical foul territory today since uh, Jose Ramirez versus Tim Anderson. So um, what were your thoughts on on that whole situation being that, you know, you spent some time in the American League Central. You faced both of those guys plenty. Um, obviously, Tim likes to, you know, have fun, talk, get after it, make you know that, that he's around. Um, Jose Ramirez is like the opposite. Dude, I mean, and you can tell me differently, but everyone's always like, he's pretty quiet, just kind of does his thing, like a lead by example guy, not a talker. Obviously, he didn't necessarily want to be in a brawl like that, but we had Andre Semenes on the other day who was like, hey, he felt like he needed to take a stand for the ball club because this had been brewing for a while and then it really escalated during that series. Yeah. Um, I won't, I guess, I won't get into. I guess my thoughts on the whole thing, but I, I, I was happy to see guys that have problems drop it and settle it um, instead of waiting for your teammates to get in between and then start chirping and, and pushing and acting like you're going to go get somebody. If you got a problem, settle it. And um, I was, I was, that was the one part of it that I was, I was, um, you know, pretty excited to see. <laughs> Great fun. Very politically yes, correct. Yes, very politically very, correct. Very, very PC. Well, who, As a guy that's still playing, I yeah. said it 100%. Good. Hey, they got into some They got into some action early. We talked about it earlier this season. 
with the Yanks, but you guys are old news now. The Yanks are more interested in, in getting into it with the Rays these days. So Witt didn't have any problem with the Cleveland infield back in the day. No, you guys beat our brakes in. We had we had uh, <laughs> we had no issues with Kip. No, well, who uh, would you say? Yeah. Who would you say in all all your time period was like kind of a, a team that that you had that kind of real rivalry going? There's the historic rivalries, but the actual rivalries that take place on the field, like Yankees Rays, is is an example of one that's actually been going on for a while now. Where it's not it's not the Yankees Red Sox history, but I think Yankees Rays right now, those two teams like legitimately have beef with each other yeah i mean there, there's there's being with toronto there, there's the al east is very just so competitive that um there's stuff that seems to when you're that competitive you're always gonna get on each other's nerves and and, and it's uh it's a more tense situation so we've had times with the yankees uh we've had times with tampa and boston um, but really, I, I, w- I would say the biggest um, rivalry that we've had since I've been here in Toronto has been Seattle. Um, you know, we've, for whatever reason, uh, they really don't like us. I think it's because when we play there, it, it's it's half Blue Jay fans. Um, I think that rubs them the wrong way. I think earlier this year they were actually selling Toronto stuff in our in our in their team store, uh, which was a wild move. But that you know, not that we did. Um, but they seem to chirp us uh, a lot more than any other team when they when they do something good, and and and, um, and uh, it stems back from last year. And so that that I would say that's the biggest rivalry that um, I've had since I've been in Toronto. Should should that be allowed? Should teams be allowed to sell other teams' jerseys when you come into town? And like I know it's not you guys. I know. You weren't unpacking boxes and hanging Vladdy Jr. jerseys up, but I, I mean, you own the team. I guess you can do whatever you want if you own the team, but uh, I mean, not the best look, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you hear? You, so Seawell done Paul Seawell done the show a lot, and he was uh, he gave us the full on breakdown of what happened. Him and JP Crawford went to whoever is more in charge and said, "Get that shit out of here." We don't want it here right now and made us stink about it. And they said the whole team felt that way. They were like, stop selling their stuff here. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I wouldn't be happy if, you know, the Yankees came to town and the Blue Jays were selling judge jerseys in the team store. I just, yeah, that's, uh, I've never heard that before. So that's, that's, that's an interesting uh, way to go about it, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Otani. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Otani might be different. Otani might be the only one where I was like, you know what, we're selling Otani jerseys. Okay, I get it. That might be the only one. And then he punches you out three times, and you're like, maybe we shouldn't be selling <laughs> yeah. jerseys. He goes deep in the same game. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's my question for you. You know, you're you're talking about this. You're talking about frustrations. Brady Singer was on here not long ago, and he said that he is – Invitation to your golf tournament got lost in the email and or the snail mail. And so he said, when you have wit on, ask him if I'm going to get invited. And he believes he is not. Listen, <laughs> I, I wish you'd have told me because I had this pulled up already. I saw okay, that. we can stall. We can yeah, stall. I saw that. <laughs> Give us the text. I was, at, I, was at, I was at Brady's bachelor party when his agent and myself came up with this idea for this golf tournament. One – Brady's about to have a child uh, relatively soon. So his wife would not let him leave the house for four days to go play in a golf tournament. There's no way that would happen. Two, Brady's um, not – I mean, he's an okay golfer, but I've got a lot of golf stories about Brady that he – he did not want to embarrass himself in front of um, other major leaguers. And he told me that point blank, he, and he laughed and said, there's no way I'm coming and playing in that thing. And I said, okay. And uh, so the fact that he wants to throw me under the bus like that, I, I just <laughs> – I hope he – I hope Tori, his wife, holds that baby in just enough time for them because she's supposed to deliver right around the time they come to Toronto uh, next week. So I'm hoping she holds it in and he gets to Toronto so I can uh, – I can – let him know how I feel about going to the bus, guys. 
<laughs> let him know with the no, back. No, you got to let him know, like, when you get up there in the box. Yeah. And, and you take him deep, and you're going to be like, yeah, throw me under the bus again. There's your invite. Yeah. <laughs> if I take that man deep, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what would happen. It would be it would be uh, it would take me about two and a half minutes to get around the bases. I, I don't, <laughs> it would. It, I pray that happens. I just I pray that happens. So do I now. Yeah. Yeah. Will you put your money where your mouth is? Like do something. It's, will will you will you like be do your slowest home run trot ever and do some type of celebration that you've never done before? A hundred percent. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, if I strike out, then that would be the worst case scenario. <laughs> oh. well you could dude you're gonna face them multiple times if you face yeah, them like out. you go one for three with a homer and a strikeout i mean that's a dub won't matter, won't matter. if i strike out i'll never hear the end of it wait did you, guys face, you guys didn't face each other in college did you no he's young he's like a lot younger than me. i was gonna say because yeah. there has to be some background here no no what's what's got age on him uh, he'd have been a uh, he'd, have been a, he'd have been a second or third rounder if he'd have faced the gamecocks when i was there <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go. Oh, let's go. go. All right, I want to I I <laughs> finish with this because this is new too. You got uh, Davis Schneider. How's that? Is that a cool story for you to see because of what it took for you to get to the bigs and it took too long? I can say it. I know you won't. But to see someone like that put in his time and then get up to the show and have some early success with you guys. Yeah, definitely. The, dude, the guy wasn't even in even in big league camp. Um, he was just coming up to back up and uh, just killed it this year in AAA. Um, came up with that mustache, front and center. Uh, just this little scrappy guy wearing Dad Force Ones. And <laughs> he plays with a glove, an infield glove, that he got from the lost and found at the facility he was teaching lessons at. And it's it's just, I mean, the guy is, he is the nicest, like humblest, most down to earth guy you've ever met. And he just steps up there, you know, like like it's nothing, and just wax balls. He's just, just little little Jersey muscle ball, just just hammer <laughs> ball. And uh, it's been it's been really cool to see. And it was been a, frankly, it's been a spark that this team needed. So, um, would love for him to continue to do what he's doing uh, for the rest of the season. Did you say dad force ones? Dad force ones. I'm sure you got some for sure. I don't. I'm a, I'm a new balance guy. So I'll I got see. my, yeah, I got my new balance. My feet are, my feet are comfortable, but, but what are, what are the dad force ones? So, so we all know we can go out and get some. Uh, the, AJ's I mean, a Nike guy. I actually don't know what model they are, but they're, if you, if you imagine a dad going to mow his grass in some white Nike, like, Shoes, that's what they are. Dude, those are the monarchs, bro. Those are monarchs. Hey. Those are monarchs. <laughs> knows them. Don't, and, don't, and by the way, also, don't give me that New Balance. Like, New Balance is so much more dad than Nike ever thought about yeah. being. Okay, yeah. ask the kids. I'm just saying. I mean, Go there's a the lot kids. more kids rocking Air Force Ones. Otani is, New Balance. Otani is wearing New Balance. Oh, thanks, Whit. Appreciate it. There it is. Well. Judges that's wearing Jordan. That's true. Well, I, quick question on Schneider. Does he still have that glove? Is he still using that as his gamer? Or did did he get another one? Also, like, I mean, there's a lot of rich dudes on your team. Is anyone, like, hooking him up with a glove, some gear, at least a dinner or something? Uh, he, look, I, I'm sure he can get a new glove, and I don't think he wants to get a new glove. That's, kind of, that's, part, of, that's part of what makes him him. So, okay. uh, we've got that. We've got, so, we've got rookie dress-up coming up next road trip, and I've got a great uh, – a nice, nice little costume picked out for him. It's going to be good. <laughs> you going to dress him up like a big leaguer since he already dresses up like rookie dress up? That'd be a good one. Uh, that'd be a good one. Like a Gucci no, we're, uh, or something? He's, uh, he's, been, he's been the talk of the – I mean, you should hear the ovations this man's getting already. It's, 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 he's the talk of the town. Canada loves him. I like that. Can we get one hint uh, of what the dress up is? Like is there a theme or even just like a hint to that theme? No, just the mustache is – just his look, it, it, it kind of fit it perfectly. So, Dude, put look. him in a Canadian tuxedo. I'll send you – I'll send him, bro. Send you a picture, yeah. Wait, I actually have a guess, but I don't know. It, what? Isn't, it doesn't one of the dudes – I don't want to ruin the surprise for him, so don't guess. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All I right. won't guess. I won't guess. 
Um, all right, wait, great catching up, dude. We'll get you again in a few weeks, and hopefully we'll talk to you post-Brady Singer. At, we will be watching that matchup. Yeah, that will be our we, circle on the calendar matchup. I need matchup. Toronto in the playoffs, too, because I haven't been to Toronto in a while. So okay. In the well, we'll get into that, too. Get them, get them on a heater, and we'll catch you again in a few. That'd be great. We'll Cheers, see you Whit. Again. We'll talk to you soon. Dude. Yep, see you. Whit Merrifield, all-star, Toronto Blue Jays. Oof. Just, just for the theater, I want to see that matchup. Those two. Oh, need that. It's real. It's real. Swing early. Yeah. <laughs> Swing early. Swing early. Yeah. I'm just saying. Have you seen Ellie De La Cruz's numbers? Uh, it's what we think. It's what we were yeah. afraid of, AJ. It's, it's called. A- normalcy when you're a rookie and you get called up I, uh, and you have to readjust to what the league figures out about you and you tire a bit down the stretch dude still got one point something wins depending on which uh which one you're using like bb refs got him at 1.1 1. 1. obviously he debuted pretty late so still if you project him over I, a season still I, I'm, I'm just talking yeah player, but, and his ops plus is still Close 96. to league average. I get 96. what you're saying. I'm just saying. Low. I'm just saying. Remember, when he came up and you anointed him the best player of all time. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. You're Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Like, listen, he's exciting as can be. The throw. I said he needed to be up in the show, and I thought he would do well. And guess what? He is doing well. Unfortunately, his team did not decide to supplement their surprise early run. They yeah. did nothing. Okay. The Reds uh, did nothing, and they relied on Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo coming back. And what's wrong? Nick Lodolo had a setback and you're a young ball club and you have tons of prospects. And they even said themselves, Nick crawl said like we can spend because fans are showing up. We can add a little to the payroll this year via trade deadline. And they did nothing. Okay. You can't rely on Ellie to carry your team this year. I I understand that, but I think that you could make a case that steer and McLean are having better years than Ellie. Yeah, of course. You can definitely okay. make that case. My, my question is, is, is it weird? Did I ever say that I didn't like those guys? No, I no, like no. those guys. I picked the Reds to destroy their over early this season. And okay. at the beginning of the year, I was like, this team's going to be better than where they're being placed right now by the odds. Okay, that's fair. But I'm just saying, and, I, and this isn't picking on Ellie at all, but we said when he came up, strikeouts were going to be a problem. 286 plate appearances, 107 punch outs. That's, that, strikeouts don't go down when you get to the big leagues. And I hope he figures it out because he's a hell of a player. But, you know, the, the Reds need him to be better than a 740 OPS, 96 sure. WRC plus player if they're going to make a run. And right now, he's that's what he is. And now, back to foul territory. Come in, Scott. Woo! Back on FT Live on Stadium, Braun Przinski, Kratz, Kipnis with you. Let's run through some of the streakers in MLB. Not the ones that were charging <laughs> Toronto with Junior Junior, but we're going to charge the mound, powered by Tiza. Go ahead, show it, Kratzy. Boom. Hold on. Wait for it. Coming back to Kratz. Oh, yeah. Dude's got flavors. Dude's got variety. <laughs> Beautiful. Our favorite model. Um, and yes, that's healthy dip. That's not dip that has nicotine, tobacco, the whole deal. Anyway, uh, you want a healthy winning streak? The Milwaukee Brewers now make it nine in a row. They've got their big series this week against the Cubbies. 6-2 dub. They go up early. The pitching shines. Now they lead by five games in the division. Yelich with a home run and the third pitch of the entire night. They didn't need to use Devin Williams. The Cubs really didn't get much going against Milwaukee consistently in this game. So this team's in pretty good shape to take a division title at this point. Kratz, you should actually start off because you're the host of the famous Brew Crew Territory show. This is just the exact opposite team that was hitting or not hitting before this nine-game streak. Five-plus runs a game for nine straight. And really, it boils down to they're not striking out as much. They were striking out at historic clip for the Brewers. Fortunately, the Twins and the Giants are in the league right now, so they weren't leading the league. But they're all the way down, I think, to like 18th in the league now in strikeouts. And it is continuing to go down. And they just – they 
they're starting to get on base. They walked the other night. I think they walked like seven or eight times. It is it is a complete 180 turnaround from the walks and Ks. And they're like, wow. And now we're driving runs in too. It, it's something that, to me, the other thing with the two additions of Canna and Santana in the lineup, it gives them some stability. AJ talks about it all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, stability in the lineup. They, you know, they had the same, the Braves had the same lineup all the time. The Brewers were the exact opposite of the Braves. They were batting Yaley third. They were batting him first. They were, you know, they were hitting whatever hot rookie came up fourth. Sal Freelich was hitting fourth. Guys were getting hurt. And now they've kind of settled in and they got our guest later today, Rowdy Telez hitting ninth. And they don't have to like jam him into the fourth spot to be like, hey, we need the offense. Guys are just rolling together right now. You want to talk about getting hot at the right time, too. Um, because the Cubs, Cubs have been playing well, and uh, the Cubs have been trying to, to creep back in there, but the Brewers have just gotten hot at the right time uh, and have not let them back into this division right now. And these are important games that would be a lot more important if uh, they had stumbled at all, but they are clicking at the right times, and it's exactly what you want to be doing. Yeah, Cubs are 7-3 and three in the last 10 and haven't, haven't gained any games. No, they lost I mean- one. Yeah, they lost. lost. Yeah, they lost when Milwaukee's won 9 of 10. And obviously, I mean, really, that was a loss right before the 9 in a row is what we're looking at the standings right now if you're listening to the pod. With Milwaukee still in third place among the division leaders, they're not going to catch the Dodgers or the Braves at this point with you know only about a month of baseball left to go. But this team's a threat. The National League, in my mind, AJ, is not just Atlanta or L.A. Like Milwaukee and Philadelphia at least. Oh, in the playoffs, yeah. oh, are going to give them problems you know, potentially. Well, first of all, Atlanta and Dodgers get a buy, which is going to help them. Yeah, for a lot of reasons, because the other whoever it is, whether it's Philly, Atlanta, even Arizona, in, in the Cubs with their starters with Steele, you don't want to face Steele, right? He's been pretty good yeah. for them, but you don't want to face Gallon and Kelly if you're facing Arizona in a five game series. You can get Gallon twice, but they're going to play the wild card game, so Gallon probably won't be able to start game one. So you only see them once, right? That's a huge thing. Now you play the Phillies, you might only get Nola Wheeler once, mm-hmm. right? Bur- Brewers, you only get Burns once probably if they make it, right? And the other thing is the Brewers aren't afraid of the Dodgers and they're not afraid of the Braves. And the Phillies damn sure ain't afraid of either one. So, no, the, originally we were like, oh, it's Braves, Dodgers, and everyone else. These other teams, because of what they've done and how much confidence they have going, it's going to be a much more enjoyable National League playoffs for me this year to watch. You know who I don't want to face? Woodruff, Burns, Peralta. Miley. Miley. Wait, and then Piamps, Piamps, and Devin Williams. Uh, Devin Williams. Back Pagero. Guy. Rebe guy. You guys seen that? Pagero. Seen that? A Rebe. Seen that Rebe guy they have? No. Yep. Was Abner. Abner or Rebe? No, a Rebe. He almost, killed, he almost killed Tatis the other day. Did you see oh, that? He, he undressed him. Oh, my gosh. 102 in his neck. They find bullpen guys, though. That team does it really well. And then just a minute here on Seattle, they do it really well, too. Their bullpen is awesome. We're going to talk to Ken Rosenthal later. He wrote about the bullpen for the Mariners, even post Seawall trade. They've been great. And he documents like where they found a lot of these dudes. First off, they have ripped the Padres off on trades. Matt Brash, look back at that deal. And then look at the big-ass deal they did. The one hater. that involved Nola. Well, the hater deal for the Padres, you're saying, oh, with Milwaukee. I'm saying with Seattle. Oh, oh, oh. Seattle, dude, they picked up Andres Munoz, who, who stuff-wise is one of the best relievers in baseball. It was all in that one big-ass trade with with Seattle and San Diego. Remember? It was like a seven-player deal. Oof, look back at that trade. Super lopsided. So, hey, you need to do that. I mean – you got to win trades. And you got to build a bullpen because we'll do L West here for a quick sec. Like, and you saw Texas. Texas pulled off a double get to that. But, I mean, their bullpen still has been suffering even despite what they, they added need, to it. They need some help. They need, well, it's, it's too, too late, late in the season. I know. You can't they, get help anymore. They, they yeah. But they, dude, what are the numbers? They've saved 25 and blown 25 saves. Is that what it is? Something crazy. Until it's, last night, they were below, I thought it was 24 saves and 25 blown saves. 
Yeah, it's, it's right at 50-50. I love when AJ goes and has a team, and I love that you have them back-to-back because you just get so much information. It makes our betting so much easier. I love it. <laughs> Too much. Information overload. I'm well, sure you on, have it, yeah. I mean, it's not helping my betting. No. On, hey, he faded my ass <laughs> yesterday. He faded me yesterday. So on that note, let's actually swing right back in a sec, and uh, we'll go over our picks. And I'll also give you the poll results to our earlier question about what the fans charging the field should have to deal with. But we'll, we'll go over our picks for the night, and uh, we'll also get a little deeper into the uh, Rangers situation from yesterday. Use the discount code FOUL, F-O-U-L, for 20% off your first order at TizaEnergy.com. That's it for Charge the Mound, powered by Tiza. Right back with picks. Radney Telez and Ken Rosenthal coming up in hour two. It only took a few weeks. Noah Syndergaard was designated for assignment by Cleveland. And on the other side, the Dodgers picked up a piece. I mean, Ahmed Rosario was having a tough year. I know it was weird, actually, how much decline there was on defense for a guy that should still be in his prime. He's still in his 20s. I believe he's like 29. He's going to hit free agency here. And if you look at his numbers, the struggles were against right-handed pitching. Like immense struggles against right-handed pitching. Against left-handed pitching, he had a good line. And the Dodgers said... We left a platoon, so let's plug him in. He's not like running the world for LA, but he's he's a useful player for a contending club. And Syndergaard wasn't going to throw another pitch for them, so it's an instant win of a deal. It sucks for Thor; he hasn't been the same since coming off the Tommy John surgery. Usually, a guy comes back and he throws just as hard these days. It just wasn't the case for him. So probably at this point, minor league contract. See if he can find it again, you know, in the off season to latch on with the team. But my point here is. That's an instant win of a trade for the Dodgers, AJ. Yet another dub for the Dodgers at the trade deadline. Well, two things. One, the Guardians were trying to clear space for their younger guys they brought up because they realized they weren't going to win the division. So they wanted, you know, whoever they could bring up. I think it's Arias uh, is playing shortstop for them every day. So they were like, okay, I'm at. And I think he's a free agent or his contract's almost up at the end of the year. So like, we're not bringing you back anyways. No, Rosario is a free agent. Yeah. yeah so the, the Guardians, like, whatever we can get for this guy, let's try. And maybe they catch lightning in a bottle with Syndergaard. And then I think if you talk to people around baseball, Syndergaard was just having a hard time in general, mentally. Like we saw the, I'd give away my firstborn. Remember that whole quote fest he had a couple of months ago? If I could pitch the way I did when I was with the Mets. But if you talk to people in baseball, they're like, did he get too big? Is he too bulky? He's not loose enough. He didn't have the whip he used to have in his arm. And it affected him mentally. Like from if you talk to people, they're like, he's got the hair and he looks like Thor. But mentally, it's not as strong as I think we expect him to be because of the physique and what he looks like. So I, I think this is a chance for him to get off, get out of the season. He's struggling. Like you said, I don't know, go to, go to somewhere that makes him comfortable, get back to where he is, and sign a minor league deal with the team, go into spring training, win a job, and become a useful major league pitcher like we know he can be. And now back to foul territory. Back at it, and by the way, um, the poll results from earlier, what do you think? I mean, all of the above, including the so. pack, and lifetime ban for what fans should get if they're running on the How field. How lifetime ban them, though? You're not allowed facial, facial recognition. recognition. I mean, my thing is all of the above. They should, have, they yeah, should be oh, fined, should banned, jail, fined. And, and jailed, especially the dudes yesterday. That was and fucking kind of weird. maybe deserve maybe some things, extracurricular things to happen to you while you're in that little wow. cell they have. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Just get after it. I mean, if, like was, if those golf? things might happen, maybe. We Behind golf. the scenes. <laughs> we golf is one way to put it. Let's go over um, the FT heater. It is Tuesday. Every Tuesday, we boost the odds within the BetMGM app. And also just to take you behind the curtain for a sec, this is not just like our friends at BetMGM putting this together. We are hard at work in our text group coming up with a pick because we're hot again. This has been working. We're going Corbin Burns, five plus Ks, and the Brewers money line. It was plus 170. It is now plus 210. Why are you looking at me weird? Get- Kip, did you get a text about the heater? Well, sure oh, I'm didn't. sorry. Sure oh, didn't. man, they left me out for if some reason because if you're a I must be calling host, nice because I ain't get uh, no there text. There are two qualifications. <laughs> I ain't get no text. Okay, Kratz, we will include AJ from now on. But then if you are included, you have to be an active participant. Kratz and me take this very seriously. I was also going to say you need to be a full-time host. 
and you need to be full, I'm full um, time? successfully uh. putting it together. Well, you're, you're a four day or and you yeah. need to be successfully well, Kim said he putting got a text. He's your best day. together. No, I didn't oh, get a text. Oh, I, I was gonna say. No. Oh, all right. No, he's not there yet. Maybe next year. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your Monday locks. Uh, but by the way, yeah, check out the heater. Your Monday locks, boom. Successful. <laughs> Kratz predicting everything that was going to go down with Giolito and Taiwan Walker. And I had some sweat, but I got through the Rangers down to their final out. Nathaniel Lowe with a solid knock off of basically like the third or fourth string high leverage guy for the Mets. And Gray hit his case easily, tripled that. So we update our money bags. Everybody's up in the 700s. And AJ is down I'm in the 700s. 700s. You are He's in the different. 700s. Aren't are you going big tonight? And we're only go got big. a minute left, so we got to rush. I'm going. I'm also betting on the Brewers and Corbin Burns. I'm I'm betting Burns six Ks though, mm-hmm. and I'm betting Steel five Ks, and then I'm betting under seven and a half. Why? Because the wind's supposed to blow in at twenty miles an hour in Wrigley. So I think this got all the makers of a two to one game. Okay, watch out though for that Brewers offense. Kratz, what are you doing? I'm going with Tyler Anderson versus Lorenzen. Three plus Ks, each of them getting a walk. The numbers are ridiculous that they've all gotten it already. I wish we had more time. We'll hit it later. It's a okay. block. Kip? I'm taking three favorites for a big parlay. I'm going Baltimore money line, Toronto money line, and Atlanta money line for Ooh. plus 183. Nice. All right. 200 on it. We got a lot of pluses today. I'm going plus uh, 105 or – Right? Yeah, plus 105, Texas money line. We'll fix that. And Heaney, three plus hits. He gets three hits? He doesn't even hit. No, allowing three oh. plus hits, which oh. has happened in 21 of his last 22 starts. And then oh. I need the Rangers to win. I bought some money down to get to plus 105. Uh, there's a new $1,500 first bet offer on BetMGM when you use the bonus code FOUL. And you download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or hit up BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least 10 bucks into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. Place your first wager. Receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if that bet loses. And if it does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And that's it for us on Stadium. We are on the Foul Territory YouTube channel right away with Ken Rosenthal next. Hour two of FT Live. Let's run it. Braun Przinski, Kipnis, Kratz. And actually, while we have one quick minute before Ken Rosenthal joins us, can we jump right into the weeds on tribute videos from our player fam here? So, oh, okay. Uh, well, can I go over Scherzer? What happened there? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> no. I'm talking did. to someone that's not on. Uh, <laughs> Scott, stop talking to yourself. Uh, Max Scherzer was back in City Field for the first time since the trade to the Texas Rangers and answered a bunch of questions for the media, did a nice job there. They gave him a tribute video, and the reaction was... <laughs> which I'm not surprised. First I mean, he all, wasn't there he for a, a long tribute time. Video? He was there, what, a year? A year? Was a year, year and a half. A year, year yeah. and a half, right? It was, it was last year. He signed yeah. last year, right? Right, so... 
The answer is no. I don't think he should get he a tribute video, a tribute and I, video. I think he would have said the same thing. No, no offense to Max Scherzer, he's going to the Hall of Fame, but it's not like he won a World Series or helped them do anything. Okay, Kip, you played for the Cubs for a hot minute, didn't you? Yeah. If if you went back there um, right after, would and you had a tribute video, would you be like, uh, no? Well, it was also the COVID year, so it was like 60 games and nobody. Right, the, right. So I had no, no connection to fans or anything of that matter. But um, here it is. I don't know. I, I would have made it really short. I don't like anything over. Yeah, that should have been the whole video that they just showed right there. Um, for this reason as well, that the reception might not have been <laughs> maybe a little predictable being in, in New York. The reception was going to be a little predictable. And Mets fans were understandably a little bit um, pissed. Sure. You know, about that, what's worked out there. That's yeah, it's, Kratz, just, it's Kratz, too short. Everywhere Kratz went, they would have had to do one in 14 different places. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Kratz, I mean. That'd be terrible. And they, and they wouldn't even have – it wouldn't be a long video. So it would just be like me doing one thing. Hey, there's your hit. Hey, thanks for – I got <laughs> me, Rays. I, I got one in Cleveland, too, going back. And it was just, again, to an empty stadium with nobody there. <laughs> brutal brutal all right well we got a big party here for our guy our insider ken rosenthal joins us right now ken great to see you You got a, a big uh, rowdy party here actually ready to let's joining us later but um who's your nl mvp well the good news is we don't have to pick today but the way i see it right now there are two guys in the running they're both great contenders you cannot go wrong picking either one of them i'm talking of course about acuna jr and mookie betts Oh! I wrote a little bit about this today in the windup. Whoa, who's your choice, AJ? Freddie. Who do you got? Freddie. Really? Freddie. Freddie's a good choice, too, but I don't know that he's as dynamic or as impactful as either of the guys I just mentioned. Freddie and Matt Olson certainly are in this conversation, and they are worthy of consideration. But at the same time, Mookie Betts is having a crazy run here this last month or so, and Acuna Jr. all season long. And what Acuna Jr. does that separates him, in my opinion, and I'll get into Mookie in a minute, is the historic nature of his season. When he gets to this 30-60, 30, 30 home runs, 60 stolen base plateau, and he's only one homer away, he'll be the first player in history ever to do that. He's on a pace with runs scored and stolen bases that only Ty Cobb has done in Major League history. And he's done it for the best team in the majors leading off. Mookie, of course, also a leadoff hitter, also dynamic. And the thing that Mookie has over Acuna is a lead, and not an insignificant lead in wins above replacement, however you want to measure it. OPS, his is higher. And Mookie, of course, is, by the metrics, the better defender. And, of course, what he does also is play three different positions or has played three different positions this season, second base, shortstop, and his usual brilliant right field. So from that perspective... To me, it's those two guys. Go ahead, AJ. Fire away. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't know if you were going to go Freddie or Mookie. I listen, but Mookie's having a great year. The, I mean, Acuna probably is going to win it. I mean, yeah, I, I think you're right on those two. And I love Mookie, and I love Ronald, and I love Freddie, and Matt Olson's great. So, but Acuna's going to win unless he gets hurt. What's amazing is Matt Olson leads. The National League in home runs and RBIs, even though he hasn't hit a home run in 56 plate appearances, and yet he is not a principal part of this conversation. Freddie, 50 doubles, that's a Los Angeles Dodgers franchise record. He's second in the league and on base to Acuna, and yet he is not prominent in this conversation. And keep in mind, first baseman, even though Goldschmidt won last year, have a little bit of an uphill battle because their position is not quite as important. To me, as I wrote today, in any other year, any of these guys would be a pretty clear front runner, and we have four of them. Ken, question for you, because I don't want to diminish Acuna or anyone when I ask this. Um, how much are you noticing stolen bases being up because of the rule changes? And because I don't want to take away 30 and 60 is unheard of, like you're saying in this league. And um, But is that some of that a product of the rule changes and the, the increased base still from uh, players around the league? Jason, that's a great point. And it's undeniable that you have to grade that on a little bit of a curve. At the same time, Acuna leads the majors. So he's the best at doing this. And that needs to be taken into consideration as well. So it's not as if 
He's simply taking advantage of the rules as it are, is everyone else, and that's why he's going to become the first player in history to make this incredible milestone. It's because he's done it at the highest level, higher than anyone else. So it's a good point. I appreciate the point, but at the same time, I still acknowledge what he's doing and sure. really admire it. It's impressive. Really impressive. Can't. Ken, we talked about this on the air on Saturday in our Twins Rangers game. You're talking about NL MVP. I asked you the question: Is it possible for someone to swipe in and steal Otani's AL MVP? Is it possible? I know you're going to say no, but I think you're wrong. Well, <laughs> AJ, I started to answer on Saturday, but then Ezekiel Duran made that dumb base running play to third base, and I uttered about two sentences. So at least now I can explain myself a little bit. Otani over five months is clearly the MVP. We know that. And your question was a really good one. Can Julio Rodriguez, who is having an incredible run with the Mariners, maybe get in there and steal it? And my answer was, before this play occurred, if Otani continues playing, and he's certainly playing right now, and it looks like he'll play a little bit more at least before deciding how to treat that torn UCL, if he continues playing, it's pretty obvious. Now, if he stops playing, let's say, next week, and Rodriguez goes crazy, continues to go crazy, and they get in. It's a conversation, but it seems to me that Otani would still rate the edge because of what he has done as a pitcher, as a hitter, as a base runner. Everything he does is brilliant. So I still see him being the guy, but now there is an opening at least to discuss this if he does not finish the season. You talked about in your one article about how Jeremy Reed, his old hitting coach, said it might affect Otani not pitching next year. And then he brought up other things about his rehab. Did he say anything else that would lead you to believe, like, Otani may not hit as well next year if he does get Tommy John surgery or, you know, he's not pitching? Well, it's interesting, Eric. This conversation began with Jeremy a couple of years ago, 21. And he said at the time that, Otani thrives as both a pitcher and a hitter. And I remember John Smoltz had said on our air in a broadcast, he thought that if Otani just focused solely on pitching, he could be another Jacob deGrom. And that's high praise at the time, obviously, even now. But Jeremy Reed's point was he's better when he's doing both because that way he doesn't get too into the weeds on either one. He doesn't get too obsessive about what he's doing in either particular skill because he has to do both. He has to keep moving before games to prepare himself in both ways. So I called Jeremy Reed back the other day to ask him, okay, we're looking at a situation now where he might need to be a hitter only for a period of time, maybe even for a lengthy period of time, maybe even for the rest of his career. And what Jeremy Reed said was interesting. He said, Otani has grown, grown as a player and is so much more mature now. Not that he was immature before, but he's become more experienced. I guess that's the better way to put it. And he didn't think it would be as big a problem. He thought the rehab from whatever he is going to undergo, whether it's surgery or a straight rehab, that would be the distraction Otani needs. Now, it's still a real question what's going to happen here, what decision he's going to make. And I point back to something the Athletics' Evan Drellick wrote, I guess it was last week, in which he quoted doctors as saying, if Otani wants to pitch again at the highest level and he undergoes a second Tommy John, a revision, the best way to do that would be to stop hitting entirely, devote himself entirely to the rehabilitation next year, and then come out in 2025 and do both. Whether that happens, I have strong doubts about. Remember the last time Otani came back and hit pretty soon after the surgery, in the following May after having the surgery in October. So, it's all a mystery right now. We don't know what he's going to decide. We don't know where this is headed. But the fact that we talk about this kind of thing with this player, it's just so unusual even to think about it. And again, it comes back to the fact that he is so good at both. And Ken, there was drama this weekend too. And fittingly, the Angels were at City Field. So you're going to get the added fun of the New York media where they felt like they needed to clarify what led up to that injury. What was your take on that situation where... 
the Angels wanted to come out publicly and say, hold up, hold up. He didn't want imaging done. And Kratz yesterday saw on the show, like, hey, maybe a player doesn't want to give all his medicals all the time. So I don't know if you thought they were maybe covering for anyone or also trying to say, like, we take care of our pitchers. He wouldn't let us test him. My initial reaction was maybe they were covering. But then I made a few phone calls and I asked some questions. And the answers I got were essentially that Otani at the time did not feel that an MRI was warranted. And his agent, Nez Bolello of CAA, did not feel an MRI was warranted. The Angels did offer him that possibility. And what Eric said, I learned, and I did not know this, is absolutely accurate. A player doesn't necessarily want an MRI in his file as he goes to become a free agent. It, they want a clean bill of health if possible. And when Perry Manazian came out and said that as the Angels GM, I also wondered, okay, why is he saying that? Is there a rift with the Otani camp? And the truth is they communicate on everything pretty much. He cleared with that camp, with Bolello and Otani presumably, what he was going to say. Not that he had to clear it, but he informed them what he was going to say. And they had no objection, evidently, because they didn't come out and say anything different. So here's a guy that did not feel that the MRI was necessary. It was a finger problem, that it was a cramping problem in his legs. And from everything we can tell right now, it does appear he blew out in that game. Just throw a 95 in the first inning. And I was told that you cannot throw a 95 with a torn <laughs> UCL. So it seems that everything was on the up and up. What happened was Nez Bolello, I'm sorry, Perry Manazian was getting criticism because they hadn't given him an MRI, criticism from various people. And he felt his need to defend himself, and he did. I, Ken, it's not so much as a question as I just want to follow up on what Eric said earlier, that to give people a little glimpse into the business side of uh, the MLB with players where the MRI that you don't want it on your record, a lot of players kind of fight that having too much information about them. So when the teams come to them and they want to wear these, these stress indicators or how much they're sweating or whether they've lost just a little bit of step so they can improve, if there's record of you showing that you're losing a little step, Players know teams will take that into arbitration. They will take that into contract negotiations. They will use that against them. So while it's useful information to have, a lot of players kind of fight back where they don't want to see it or to have that on them because more times than not, it's going to be used against them than for them. No, I'm glad yeah. both of you guys made that point because you've been there. And again, as someone who's covered this league for, I don't know, 35 plus years, I did not know this. I did not know that players might resist an MRI if they felt it was borderline because as a potential free agent, they would want their record clean. And that's important to know. And all the fans and all the people in the media, those people who are screaming about this, well, maybe now next time they won't scream as loud knowing what they know. And again, there was not an indication of an elbow problem before this all went down. There were other things going on with him. He was fatigued. Well, of course he's going to be fatigued. He's doing something no one else has ever done. He started doing it in March with the WBC, and I'm not blaming the WBC either, but there were all these things that occurred, and at the time, there was not an arm issue. So when the arm issue arose, okay, of course it's natural to ask the question, what did you guys know and when did you know it? But it seems like from everything we know, this was on the up and up. That's good info. Okay. Also enjoyed reading about your work with the uh, covering the twins in the past week. So, so two interesting portions. I'll start with the most interesting to me was your conversation with Max Kepler about what changed for him in the second half of the season and that it was more of this team related answer. So yes, positive, And I know you'll touch on this news on what's changed with the twins, but do you also look back at the first half? Like what was going on? Was there a lot of selfish baseball being played? I didn't take it that way when I talked to Kepler, and he did have some really interesting things to say. Frankly, things I've never heard from a player before. Generally, when you ask a player, hey, what turned it around? He'll point to a mechanical adjustment, maybe a mental reset, all kinds of individual things that might change, help with a coach or work with a coach, all kinds of things. In his case, he said, I'm not really going to take individual credit here. It was the team. It was the team coming together together in the second half, supporting each other, communicating better than they had in the first half. And I, as a player, thrive off of that. I like when I can help guys. I like when guys can help me. I feel 
that vibe and it elevates me. Now, it wasn't that he was critical of the way the team was in the first half. It's just that he felt they had reached a new place as a team, chemistry-wise, in the second half. Maybe they just determined as one, organically, hey, we're going to pull together here. We're going to do it in a little bit better way than we did before. And again, it was just interesting to me that he did not really take individual credit. He credited the team with his own individual turnaround. It was kind of refreshing to hear, different to hear for sure. And I would have gotten this on the air on Saturday, but, you know, AJ talks a lot. (laughs) <laughs> because i had already said i'm gonna follow this um you know you did all your work on the twins last week you're too good to do the twins and rangers again with me this week so i mean it's weird how you know I it's, talk too you much. need space to speak i let no, him no, he actually wants to the do three was, innings i let him go he can talk I'm all kidding, he wants. Back and, back, Ken. And, and, uh, in all seriousness that game this happens sometimes in my job every time i tried was planning to open my mouth something would happen the guy hit triple whatever was going on and it, it was just odds were working against me or the, or but the yes, rangers had bad thing thing the rangers had bad base running i mean there was a uh, whole slew of once. things that happened in that game <laughs> yeah, yeah there were mostly all negative for the rangers i was like gosh <laughs> True. But here, now it, about the it, twins it, guys uh, I'm, I'm just gonna say about the twins i don't know if aj agrees with me after watching them this weekend he's seen them probably a bit more than i have this year It seems to me they're set up better than they have been in the past to maybe win a post-season series series, and that streak of 18 consecutive playoff losses. Going back to AJ's days with the team, they have a top three in their rotation of Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, and Pablo Lopez. That is quite good. They have the ability in the postseason to put Kenta Maeda in the bullpen, possibility of Chris Pata coming back, Alcala coming back, and their offense right now is one of the top offenses, has been in the second half in the major leagues. They have a lot of interchangeable parts. They have guys who have stepped up, like Kepler, who were not necessarily performing that way in the first half and who have basically helped the team perform at this level without Correa and Buxton being normal Correa and Buxton. So the young kids, Walner and Eduardo Julian, a number of others, some bench players as well. AJ mentioned this on the broadcast. I just kind of like what I see, and I don't know. Maybe they can't beat the Astros or the Rangers or the Rays, whoever they're going to face, but it seems to me they have a better shot. Listen, I agree with you. I was going to bring that up to you. Uh, I I think the Twins, and we talked about this on the broadcast from Saturday, it'll come up this Saturday. Not only do the Twins have a better team than they've had in the past, they don't have to play the Yankees, who just annihilate them in the postseason every year, right? But there's top three pitching. You throw a gray – you throw Pablo Lopez out there, right? I mean, those are two top flight, really good starters made in the bowl. You, me- you mentioned it all, right? The thing for me is the American League is doesn't seem as strong. Now, people can argue and say whatever, but in the first round, they're likely looking at not Baltimore, okay, probably, and then who, not the, not West the AL winner. West winner. Not right. the AL West winner, right, whoever that is. So you're going to get Astros, Rangers, whoever the other wild card is, right? It's going to be okay. It's going to be maybe the Blue Jays. I like their chances against all those teams, not only to win a game, but to win a series because of their big three at the top. And because I think, like you said, if, if Rocco Baldelli was talking about Patton coming back or, you know, uh, what's his name? Paddock coming back. Paddock, yep. And, yeah, uh, they're excited about him. You no, know, they are. And he said he looks amazing. He, he was talking about it to us on Saturday. I, I mean, I love their chances because they're swinging the bat. And they're playing a different game. Yes, they have to hit home runs, but they're playing a different game than Twins teams in the past. And it's fun to – I mean, it was fun to watch on Saturday. I'll get to see them again this Saturday. But it's a fun game to watch. Pitch. It's kind of like the old school Twins. Pitching, defense, some timely hitting, and occasional home runs. And, and I think Rocco has them trending in the right direction. The one team that I believe we're all underestimating here is Houston. Their offense in the second half has been – the best in the majors, I believe, statistically. You saw it last night, Altuve with the cycle, Jordan Alvarez, four hits. Their bullpen worries me. Their rotation worries me, frankly. It's Verlander. It's an inconsistent Framer Valdez. It's a Christian Javier who is not the same. And yet, we know this, guys. They've done this for a long time now. And they have that ability, that know-how, whatever you want to call it. And while their pitching is not quite the same, 
they are still a team we cannot forget about and dismiss easily for sure. So, Ken, one more on the Twins, because the other layer of what you wrote about in your notes, I had a follow-up question for you on Correa. It was um, great insight on how he de- dealt with plantar fasciitis. And he said, and he's, he's always candid, especially lately, he came back earlier than he would have if he had his free agent season going on right now. So what was your take on the honesty of those comments, both to say, hey, if I was in a different spot, it's, it's a little bit more about me and making sure my numbers are good. At the same time, he's like, my presence is needed here. But I always wonder about that threshold with players, like your presence and coming back too soon versus your production. If you're not playing well, you're not helpful for the team either. There's always a balance, Scott. And I covered Cal Ripken Jr. for a long time. And when he wasn't hitting and the streak was going on, he would always say, I can contribute to my team in other ways. And his managers would always say they wanted him out at shortstop because he was basically going to play a brilliant shortstop. Not a rangy shortstop necessarily, but he'd get to everything he could and make every play. With Correa, it's something of a similar mindset, at least the way he's approaching it right now. He suffered the injury in late May, the plantar fasciitis. It's lingered the entire season. He said it's affecting every aspect of his game, not just offense, which is down. I said, defense? He goes, look at my sprint speed. It's the worst of my career. And he was right. It's the worst of his career. His defensive metrics are down a little bit too. He just feels that him being out there, and he has not gone on the injured list the whole time. And by the way, this is the other foot. This is not the foot that was the issue in the offseason when he was a free agent. He just feels that being out there, he can contribute defensively. He can do some things offensively. And right now he is finally starting to come out of it a little bit. On base streak, I don't know if it's still active, but it was 18 straight at one point, maybe 19 straight now. So he feels that that was important, that he needed to be there for his team. And yes, if he was a free agent and the numbers were going to be held against him, right, then he might have made some different decisions. Now, it's always interesting. And we had, AJ, you know this, Joe Ryan pitch in this game on Saturday. He had fought through an injury earlier and to the team's detriment. He didn't tell them soon enough, hey, I've got a problem here. And he got rocked in a period of seven starts. There's a balance. There is a veteran knowledge that you have over the years. You gain and collect when to go, when not to go. But Correa has just felt that he has to play. And you know they're going to use that against Joe Ryan when he gets arbitration at some point. (laughs) Well, for real. No, but what I'm saying is Joe Ryan is he tried to pitch through it, and he had never done that before. And even Rocco talked about it when we talked to him. He said he didn't really – he never complained about it. Like, it wasn't like a thing where he just said, oh, there's a little tightness, but I can pitch through it. And it affected everything. It affected his motion. It affected his fastball because, like, he really throws a lot of fastballs, and it wasn't the same because he couldn't get the extension he needed and everything. And so, well, they hold it against him only because his numbers went down. They're not going to say, well, he pitched through an injury. They're just going to say – well, no, I'm saying an arb. That's what they do. I mean, oh, Corbin well, Burns well. last year. Oh, you had you had one little stretch where you weren't great. You know, for seven starts. That's why we didn't make the playoffs. I mean, arb is. <laughs> well, is the Twins cool. are going to make the playoffs. Yes, exactly. All right, Ken. Good stuff. Great to catch up with you again, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. And uh, fair territory is out there for the world to <clears> consume <throat> every single Monday, except for next week. If you listen to this episode. Programming note, next week is Labor Day, so it will drop on Tuesday. But the Monday episode from this week is out there right now, wherever you get your pods. And also, it is up there on YouTube. All right. Well, I I think, Kratzy, you've got to be the guy. Because it's about to rain like crazy here. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Shady Rays, Always sunny in Philadelphia, boys. (laughs) (laughs) Beautifully stated. Your shady rays, as shown by Eric Kratz. And also, together with their customers, they are providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. I wanted to point out their shady rays impact from building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. They're making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. You can hear about this on Fair Territory as well, doing a great job making an impact into the community. And also, of course, if you get a pair and you feel like you don't look as swaggy as Kratz does right now, and no, he's not frozen. He's (laughs) just got his game face on. He's trying to compete with Kip in the poker tourneys. Uh, If you don't love your Shady Rays, you can exchange them for a new pair 
or return them for free within 30 days. No risk when you shop. They've always got your back. Exclusively for Foul Territory watchers or listeners, Shady Rays giving out the best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use code FOUL, F-O-U-L, for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. All right, let's get to some uh, game previewing, shall we? So a little last-minute game time action. Um, thanks to our friends at Game Time, we'll preview some of the games today. I also would like to just mention this. I feel like this is the time to do it because uh, two things, actually, and we'll talk more about the Game Time app in a sec. You and me have to hit a raise game. You promised. We're running out of time. Are we going to figure it out? Promise is a promise. You go? You're never here. That's Thank true. God. Uh, <laughs> dude, I, I came down here just to hang out with you during the hurricane, and you're saying I'm never here. I'm, I'm putting you guys it will have to, game night at the top of my to do list. We are hitting game time and going to a game in the next few weeks, a raise game before the playoffs. So then you got a little playoff broadcast action. And also, oh. my parents were at the Royals game yesterday. Brave to go to the Royals Pirates game in late August, um, which actually was a gem from. Uh, uh, Damn, I'm forgetting Oviedo. his name. Pirates. Oviedo. 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 By the way, um, before I know where they saw going. everybody on the field, though, they were all and they were wearing foul territory and they were like, oh shit. And some of the guys were like, yo, can I come on? Who they were wearing foul territory stuff. My parents. Oh, your parents. So they they talked to, dudes. they were talking to Piccolo, Derek Shelton, uh, Bobby Witt. Uh, Taylor Hearn told them, like, can you please send me a message? I want to come on soon. So it was just like a, a whole list of people passing by, like, oh, where'd you get that? So. Yeah. I'm just gonna say this, and this is—I don't mean this. This is kind of come across. Have you guys seen Zach Greinke's one and thirteen this year? Wow, with a it's five point three ERA. Like I, I saw that last night. He was one and twelve, and I was like, "What? This can't be right." And then I looked today. He lost last night again. He's one and thirteen with a. Five. I'm like, "Damn, Zach Greinke's way better than that." What is going on in Kansas City? But oh, I, I did. I mean, Jordan that. Lyles is at a six and a half. Yeah, but he's got like four wins. I remember he was 0-11 at one point. He's 3-15. and 15. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get into the win. I know, but I, it's just amazing when you see a guy that has is a potential Hall of Famer like Zach Greinke with all the pride he has, and you look up and he's 1-13. and 13. You just don't ex- – Jordan Lyles, I mean, is not Zach Greinke. Yeah, but Zach Greinke is also at the twilight of his career. I understand that, but you, you would think he's not 1-13. and 13. But 1-13 and 13 has a lot to do with your ball club, too. Yeah. No? Uh, yeah. I'm just saying 1-13. There's not a lot of season. dubs on the board this year for the Royals. Cratch, no secrets. 1-13 for Zach Greinke. Kip, you face Zach Greinke. Is that surprising to look up and say he's 1-13? Yeah. Short answer, yes. Surprised, yes. And I understand what Scott's saying, but it's 1-13. Like, Zach Greinke is trying to figure out how to win the games. You saw Adam Wainwright's game the other night, last night, against the Padres. There's a whole team pushing for that man to get two more wins. And they might have four more chances. He did everything he could last night to try to get that win, and he left with a one nothing lead. I mean, a one nothing. He had given up one run. Yes. Which is why it's a bullshit stat. No, but it, okay. I mean, listen, I'm rooting for Adam Wainwright to get two more wins, too. But, I mean, he goes out and throws six innings, one run. And that's a loss. That's like, the way like, the yeah. cookie crumbles. I know. I'm sorry. But still, still, that's just the way the stat you're, works. You're just, you're just not a hater. There's stat that's reliant hater. on other factors. Hater. That's all. It's just what it is. Not a hater. I want Wayne Wright <laughs> to get all the accomplishments. This is the swan song for him, and the games they're playing don't matter. So go rack it up. All right. So where are we going tonight, Kip? You got a game that you're circling? Uh, I think the Cubs Brewers. I kind of want to see Burns versus Steele. I think that's a good pitching matchup that I'd love to watch. So I'm, I'm staying home here. Kratz? Dang it. You took mine. I take yours? I take yours? That's okay. I want to go another, I want to go another wild card. <laughs> yeah. I want to go. We can go, we can go together. We can free, freeze in Wrigley because it's going to be cold there tonight, too, with the wind blowing out. I mean, blowing gonna go in. Going to go to Florida to get a rain out so I could go to dinner. That that would be nice. You go down. <laughs> but you can't because it's in Miami, so you got oh. the roof. Although, I don't know what the situation – I mean, they're not getting the no, not getting the bad pitch. stuff no. there anyway. But that, that game is actually really good. I was looking at that one, thinking about if I wanted to bet on that one as my lock. Savali, who's pitched well. Alcantara, who's been very up and down. Um, I, that's actually a really good matchup. Yeah. Totally. I agree. Where I'm, are you going going? To, I'm going to San Francisco if you wanted me to finish my answer. Sure. Yeah. San Francisco. <laughs> I'm going to go see 
two teams that want to make the want to make the playoffs. I think one is going in one direction, and I think the other one has won two straight. So I want to see it. Man. Two straight. Yeah, that's a great For, series. And the the two are the Wrigley, the Brewers, and the Cubs, and the Reds and the Giants are the two that are yeah that just stand out when you look at this list. You're like, bam, those are the the two most meaningful playoff series. I mean, I guess you could throw the Astros and the and the Red Sox in there, but I mean, it's Bayo Day. But yeah, those two are the games. Other than that, I mean, it's a pretty average slate. Yeah, pitch, and also this time of year, not just pitching matchup wise. Yeah, today there's a lot of guys that are just eh. um, you have less teams that are involved, so you start to get to some of those games where you're like, nope, don't care, don't care. We're not going to show you their scores on the bottom of the screen or anything. Doesn't matter. So focus <laughs> on the good stuff. That's what we're here for. That's what this segment's for. Okay, so check out the Game Time app. And if you're in need of last minute ticks, it should not be stressful. This app is perfectly made for you, the consumer, to be able to get what you want very quickly and very efficiently and very cost friendly. Flash deals for last minute tickets, images of seat views, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, which is done so much better than their competition. And that game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. So even if you find tickets in the same section and the same row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference, aka that ain't happening. They've got the lowest prices out there for you. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. And you can snag the tickets without the stress with game time and get a little help on your way if you're a first time user on the app. You create an account, download the game time app, and then use the code FTLIVE. For 20 bucks off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code FT Live for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Oh, and perfect timing. We're ready to go. You guys go want to go see Rowdy and the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Chicago Cubs, those Dude, sizzling brewers. Do we ever play today? It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> bring them in, bring them in. Did you hear that shit? <laughs> no mad. Yeah. Don't be mad. He just he's just jealous. He has to be <laughs> nice to him because what I am feel I bad for him nowadays. What am I jealous of? Every every single brewer guest we have brought on here has done nothing but shred rowdy. Every single one of them. <laughs> Everybody Jealousy. needs one of those in the clubhouse, and that's fine. Bad hairline, I mean, bad is- body. But I show up every day. So everybody needs one of those in the clubhouse. Except for when your teams. finger except for when your finger hurts, then you can't show up. Then you take two weeks off. <laughs> they still talk shit for me for that too. It's it's good. AJ I'm, missed I'm happy you, to be here. Yeah, he did. That's why he had to put that <laughs> silver slugger in the back. Must have been a shitty year for catchers that year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me know when you get Kip, you got one of them. Does Kip have a no, silver dude, slugger? They don't hand those out to scrubs anymore nope. like they did back then. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're hitting ninth, dude. I'd be real quiet over there. Oh shit! Hey, there's one spot in my big league career I've never hit, and that's ninth. Hit all the other. You didn't ones. hit ninth. Lot. Where'd you? You're hitting eighth, right? When? Didn't you hit eighth lot last two nights ago? At home. No. At home, you were hitting no, ninth. I've... Maybe a pinch hit at bat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a ninth hitter. Yeah, well, you were that, the second best count. nine hitter they had. <laughs> that's probably true hey that's can, true can you look can you just show me the flags i want to know which way the wind's blowing it's wrigley it's blowing out you still can it's hit blow- homers here it's blowing in isn't it no it's during the day dude night it blows in yeah oh, it'll perfect. change it'll okay. change by just, nighttime i'm just making sure right, so yeah. what's going on what's going on here um specifically on offense you guys are putting up big ass crooked numbers Anything going on different? I mean, I don't I don't need like, oh, our approach, blah, blah, blah. Like anything going on in the clubhouse? Like, okay, I'll give you an example. We had Mike Ford on the other day and we're like, what, what's gotten into Julio? And he was like, dude's crushing Chick-fil-A every morning now. And he's like, notice how Sunday he wasn't good, but all the rest of the days he was? I'm like, that's the insight I need. Um, dude, I don't know. I just show up. <laughs> <laughs> I just- I'm just kind of – I'm like the opposite. If you need me on Sunday, I'll, I'll be open. But, we, you know, I don't know. Dude, I honestly don't know because everybody talks shit about our offense. But I guess we can hit it. You know, Why do they talk shit about it? 
I don't know. Yelly just yesterday goes, man, I just filleted that ball 14 rows deep into left center. So it was a good start to the game that day. But I just think, um, fuck out. Do we just hit? There's no, I don't know. Why can't I give you a professional answer? I don't, I don't like them. I don't know. They're boring. Bo- All right, you can, okay, give us your professional answer. We work hard and we keep our nose down and we don't, uh, we take unselfish at bats. There you go. Just put the ball in play. But doesn't everybody try to do that in the big leagues? No. I try and hit a home run every time. <laughs> <laughs> it That's the most work, honest answer he's ever given us. <laughs> it doesn't work, sometimes. but it, occasionally. That's baseball. Some, hey, what do you change? Fuck if I know. Nothing. It just started working. Yeah. Sometimes shit yeah, works. Some days, I, some days I show up, my uniform fits a little tighter than others, and waddle on out there, and hopefully don't miss a ball, and maybe I'll roll over a couple into the hole. No more shifts, so I'm in a good spot. Hey, are you guys getting was... McDonald's in, in Wrigley still? Uh, no, I eat salads. Um, <laughs> but, no, we don't. We do send the guys over to get coffee, but, no, we don't. We never had that. No, no, never the times I've played here we've ever had McDonald's. Really? That was like the best part. Do you, do you have day games? Do they still bring the uh, the Swedish pancakes and that whole breakfast yeah. buffet they have? They do that still. Those are All right. those are deadly. No, we have high performance now. You know, like we got to semi eat clean. So no, you sucks. don't. I didn't say I did. I said we. <laughs> yeah. <The> team sport. <laughs> the team ate six pancakes this morning. Yeah, the team ate six pancakes. Number 11 on the team ate six pancakes. Do you – I mean, I know that's not true because Grandy sent over some of his stuff. Did you guys – did anybody go and buy some of the cake pops and, like, all the stuff at Granderson's Bakery? May, did you do that this series? I haven't seen any of that. You haven't seen that? He sent it over early no. in the year. He told me, He told me. I think Burnsy went there and got some. Oh, then I didn't. You didn't get I any of it? I absolutely did not. Well, no. then you need to go to, you need to go to Kip, Kip's on the show here. You need to go to Kip's restaurant while you're in Chicago. Not, not open. Not, Kip, what? not open. Not Kip, open. Your old, co- your old coach is just walking by right here. Oh God, Murph. Roddy, yeah, Roddy, I know it. Roddy. Yeah, we talking Kipness. Kip. Yeah, he had nothing good to say about you, which <laughs> is a shocker because <laughs> I have a lot of good things to say about you. Hey, Rick, what? How are you connected with Kip? He's on the show right now. He's on what? Show? Murph's been on the show. On territory. Murph, you've been on the show. I don't remember that far back. God. Kip tagged me with the ball one time, and we became friends instantly. He tagged you. With the ball? Yeah. It was a nice tag. Is it a rundown? No, I don't see <laughs> a rundown. I don't want to say. Yeah, rundown, no. I wouldn't do the show. No. He played second base for the Indians. Guardians. Indians then, though. I can Who say that. He made him a second baseman. Yeah. Ask him. Ask him. He said, he, Murph said he made you a second baseman. I suggested No, he didn't. He suggested it for, like, one practice. That's he got he lucky said, with that one. Not way worse. He got Yeah, he, yeah, got he got said he suggested it, and, and you were like, eh, but you raked, so. But he then was I had throwing to shit at the wall. He was throwing shit at the wall and one stuck. Yeah. Shocker. <laughs> Murph with a good idea? Probably not. Good guy. Though. Hey, that makes me Rowdy, laugh. the boys are 8 no. 8 no since you came off the IL. Are you the straw that stirs the drink? You're like Reggie Jackson? Um, you can you can say that. I kind of <laughs> – well, I think – I think we have more than eight in a row, but since I came up, yeah, we won one in Texas before I got there. Um, you know, but I really just think well, after the rehab assignment they needed, it was really quiet, they said, in the clubhouse, and everybody was doing nice handshake stuff and saying good morning, and then I showed up, and they just yeah. started crushing me again, so I think it really got the guys going then. I'm You're strong enough to handle you know it. You, have, you know when you have a stress ball? And then you get really mad because stress takes over and you throw it at the wall. That's kind of me. You're the brewer's they, stress uh, ball? Yeah. They, dude, if they're in – if they need anger, let it out. I'm sitting right there. My locker doesn't change. I'm just – I'm always there. And 
So they just let me have it. And I kind of just, you know, I, I always said, like, if I, as much shit as I give out, I got to be able to handle it. So, you know, like, it's just, it's fun. Come on, I just, you can't take it too serious. It's really long. Season's long. Game's hard. Start taking it serious. End up with no hair. So it's just, it's tough. But I like it. It's fun. All right, so Roddy, I want you to take your anger out on, if you'd like, on what you saw yesterday, probably on your phone after the game, when Ronald Acuna Jr. had some friends that he didn't really like, because you have fan interactions all the time, coming up to him, hugging him, being super fucking weird for grown men, and then flailing their arms when they were getting taken away. Can we get your breakdown of the shit that went down in Colorado? I actually didn't see that till this morning. Um, I don't have social media, so I was going through the ESPN app to just kill time because I don't like to leave. And I saw this, this exact video, and then it made me think about yesterday. They held the bus for me for like one minute, and I was like kind of like power walking out, and the security guard was like walking next to me, but he wasn't like – he didn't have any sort of credentials. And I kind of looked at him, and I was like, hey, man, what's up? And he goes, nothing. I'm your security. I'm just walking you out. I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, yeah, you know, fans can get crazy. And I was like, yeah, if I ever saw a fan, like, track me down, I might just punch him in the face. And he was like, yeah, well, did you see the Acuna thing? And I just was like, no. And I thought, didn't know that it just happened. And if I was him, I would have punched him. I really would. I don't think you can get in trouble for that. If they're on no. the field. That's like when, you I, can... when you step in the ring. Like, you got to be able to handle it. Keep your guard up. Yeah. Wait, you were late for the bus? You made the whole team wait for the bus? No, I made it on time. Did you not hear the, like, power walking sprint thing? You said you were late by one minute. You, you said you were late the door up and fucking taken off. There's a one minute, but I was on the bus at, like, 10-10. There's a grace period. Um, yeah, dude. Who are you yelling at me for? <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying if you were late, I would have him close the fucking door. Slammed it right in your face as you went to get on, and then just did the slow pull away, and you would have to. <laughs> hey, ignore well, him. The game's He's changed. Cheap. The game's changed, man. We got a lot of good teammates here. I know you wouldn't know much about it, but we got a lot of good guys. Here. AJ needs a stress ball. Yeah, fuck. That's all they want me on the show for. To take care of AJ and for him to let him feel better about himself. <laughs> kind of like a babysitter, like a like a. Oh. Glorified yeah. babysitter for yeah. 15 minutes every few weeks. Yeah, every couple weeks. Hey, they did any catcher, since I, Kratz and I were catchers, and I know Kratz would never do this, did any catcher ever talk shit to you when you came up to the plate? Kratz. <laughs> I, well, Kratz was always a really good dude. It's really well known in baseball. And I would always come up and say, hey, how you doing? How are the kids? One day he just told me to shut up and play ball or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay. Kind of caught me Eric. off guard. I didn't know what to do. What? Um, Eric. Then, but then I was Apologize. like, you know, maybe he's going through a rough day. Diapers are full or something. I'll give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. But um, talk actual shit? No, yeah. but there's a couple of guys that, like, would hold the ball too long, like, on, on a frame and then, like, co- constantly asking for pitches. And I'm just like, dude, shut up. Look at the ball. Maybe hitting 207, but it's a ball. I know that. I haven't had, I haven't had many, like, altercations. I'm not really – a hateable person, you know. Does anybody take your personality the wrong way if they don't know you, where you make a line like, you know, hey, Bruce Harper kind of line to a, another player where you call him another name or something, and he's like, dude, that's not my name. Um, who was it? Actually, I was in – I. this is kind of funny because then I ended up playing with him with Team Mexico. Jaron Duran, uh, he hit a ground ball, like smoked a rocket. Second base, made a good play. Didn't turn two, so he's on first base. And he's like, just motherfucking the world. Mad. He's hitting like 390. And I was like, no, oh, dude, tough day at the yard, huh? Yeah. And he gets to first, and I'm like, keep swinging, bro. That was a rocket. And he looks at me and doesn't say a word. And he's like, whatever. And I was like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so then, like, fast forward. We're, we get to we get to uh, Team Mexico, and I tell him about it, and he was like, oh, yeah, I was just mad. I was in AAA. You know you know how that is. And I was like, yeah, like, it stinks. I spent three years in AAA, so, like, I don't think it does. It does stink. 
And Verdugo goes, dude, you can't just say you're in AAA. And he was like, well, I was in the bushes. And Verdugo goes, you can't just say it in the bushes when you have 40 at-bats in the big leagues. You're still in the bushes. And so then we just started calling him Bushes, the whole <laughs> Team Mexico. That was the only English we spoke, you know, because we're all fluent. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was his new nickname. I didn't know that That either. didn't carry over it to Boston. Now. Or maybe it did. Yeah. Verdugo's there with him. He's a big workout guy. Huge. Loves to look at himself in the mirror. Durant? I've never seen a guy. Uh, this guy, like, stands in the mirror all day. Dries off for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Driest guy in the league. Yeah. <laughs> is he the guy that goes in front of the mirror? We all play, we all have this one guy on every team. They go there and they're like with their shirt and they're like, okay. And they're pulling it out. So it's tucked. Like Freddie Freeman was a big, Freddie Freeman was a big, like, no my wrinkles. Shirt, no, it has to be like perfectly untucked over the belt. And like the pants have to be perfectly. Like every team has that guy that stands in the mirror and is like, they'll stand there for like 10 minutes and be like, Okay. I'm yeah, good now. but nowadays everybody wears super tight uniforms. So like, I don't you know don't? how much you can untuck it. Like people want to make it look tighter. You don't wear super tight. No man, it's not good when you. It's not a good look. Do it one day. You ever filled <laughs> up a bag full of water? Just starts flowing <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> you just leave it. Yeah, you don't do it. <laughs> just not it. So I just I stick with the you know, Manny Ramirez baggy uni. I may make it look slim fit, but it's not intentional. <laughs> hey, Rowdy, I want to take you way back to your minor league days, like a week and a half ago. Didn't you have a walk off? I did. That was my first ever walk off home run ever. Wow. Ever. Yeah. Any level, any age, any any level, any age. First walk off homer. Congrats. That's Damn. awesome. Were you Did legit ball? pumped? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I'm just trying to help everybody win. I was trying to get back. They're trying to win. So it was it was fun. It was a good moment. That's a good group of guys, you know, like very, very close-knit. The the staff down there is awesome. Um, you know, Jeremy Ricardo is our pitching coach who he said, AJ, didn't you get traded with him or for him? He was in that trade? No, no. He wasn't that good. I played, uh, <laughs> I played with him. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. With Blue the Jays. Yeah, he's a he's yeah. a good dude. He's so I really liked him. I thought AJ was in a trade with him, but I like Jeremy Carter though. He's a good dude. He's yeah. not rowdy. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he was in a trade for you. But anywho, I think uh, I would remember. I was traded <laughs> once in my life, and it wasn't him. That's what he said. That's yeah. Because yeah, they didn't want you at all. But hey, I was only tra- I was, was traded for three. It was a good three group for me. of guys. I don't know what you're saying, dude. I don't care what you're saying. I'm trying to tell, like, about my time. It's my time. Uh, but it was fun. So it was fun to be at the end of – at the home plate and just, like, feel good about doing something positive. I'm looking up uh, – I want to see the transactions now for Jeremy Ricardo. Now he's got me interested me. here. I promise you that. No, Wait, who did I mean, you hit the home run off that walked, walked, got walked off? Or you walked off? Who? Who? I don't know, but – he was kind of dumb. He threw a slider after he just blew two sinkers right by me. He probably was he released right after the game. <laughs> That's harsh. Oh, oh, oh I got him! <laughs> Finally got him. Wait, while we wait for Rowdy to maybe come back if he wants. Um, so Jeremy Ocardo was traded once in his life in 2006, traded by the San Francisco Giants to the Toronto Blue Jays. For Vinny Chulk and Shea Hillenbrand. It was not me. Oh, that was wow. not. That was part not of the AJ. whole that was part of the whole the ships are the ships are sinking. Yeah. Shea Hillenbrand wrote that on the dry erase board and yeah. John Gibbons Gibby was like, Who the hell wrote this? And it, and he like they got in each other's face and Shea Hillenbrand, he gone. It's a true story. I remember that. Wow. Or, he wrote or it Chuck, on the like, chalkboard. I didn't know that. Race, something like that. Yeah. He wrote, the ship is sinking. He got traded to Arizona. No, he came from Arizona. He got traded somewhere. San Francisco was in that one. Oh, yeah. He came from Arizona, yeah. He wrote, the ship is sinking when times were tough, like on the board? Like on the big, yeah, board they have in Toronto. And and he was he not like a rowdy type personality prankster to hmm. kind of lighten up the moment? I don't think he was like rowdy at all. I never played with him, but I don't think he was like that. Wow. Well, that's a power play. Hey, you're out of here. He gone. Yeah. 
Well, so is Ratty, but that was enjoyable. Good catch up with uh, with our boy Ratty Teles. I mean, he got so serious there for a second. About no. what? Yeah, when he was like, we're trying to play good baseball. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, trying to get him to do a BS answer. The cookie cutter, I call it. I uh, know, I know, but it's so funny. Because he's like, we're playing good baseball and having good at bats. And working hard. Yeah, yeah, really. that, yeah. I like what he said. We're working really hard and not giving any at bats away. <laughs> you guys laugh, but I watch games every night, and that's ninety-five percent of the responses on a post-game show. Am I wrong? No. It's part of why we're doing this. I'm serious. Like you watch the post-game show, and if I was new to the sport, and that's what I saw on the post-game show, I'd be like. Well, that's boring as fuck. You guys aren't trying to entertain Everybody anybody. Everybody works really hard. I don't know, yeah. Kip. Can you ever imagine going up to? The, can you ever remember going up to the plate and being like, "I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna try and have a bat at bat right here. I'm just really gonna try and have a bat at bat, and not do." I didn't need to try. Me. I didn't need to try. I did it. I did it. Yeah, but you weren't you trying just, to do it. And nobody, Scott. We can't go up and like give you an interview and like give you answers you want to hear sometimes because you whether it's a report that we have or something like, why'd you guys do well? It's like, well, cause we knew what we, what was coming or we knew keen on this guy. Cause you're not going to, cause we still want to have that same report for next time we face that guy. And, and sometimes you're just trying slider. to get out of the interview. Yeah. Right. So it's autopilot is what players will tell me. For 95% of the time. Mode. Like you said, yes. Did you guys yeah. ever go into Wrigley and, or go into Chicago and paint the, mm-hmm. paint the statue? I always mm-hmm. heard stories about that. We never did it. That was an old timey thing. They used to get the guy arrested the next day. Right, fake arrested. I did, I, I did do that twice, but it wasn't for painting the balls. Yeah. John that's... Jay and Chase Darno both went to jail. Chase Darno, <laughs> not Travis, his brother. Did you ever Chase... tell that story on this show, or which did one? You... The John Jay? Yeah. I don't know if I told. I told it somewhere. I don't know where. You told it. You, I don't know if that was when we were. Was that uh, a real show or when we were hanging out? I feel like that's when we were hanging out. But... Oh yeah. John Jay went. John Jay went to jail. For real. <laughs> he was going to jail for real. Good. Tell him. Uh, we don't have the time. It's, it's a, long... a minute long story. I know the story, and and I know Jay, and he'll get a kick out of it. And... All right. So John Jay and I, when we were in St. Louis, he he took a picture of uh, his butt on my next to my head. <laughs> Like right, I was taking a nap in Cincinnati when I wasn't playing for like a month straight, and uh, so he t- he got a big old ass. And he took his ass, and he put it like right here next to my head while I was taking a nap in Cincinnati, and he put they posted it everywhere in St. Louis, like in the even on like where they had the lineup, there was a picture of his ass next to my head, and I was like, I'm gonna get you, but you ain't gonna know when I get your ass. And I it went it went away for like a few weeks. And then we went to Chicago, and I called some cop friends, and I said, hey. Listen, can we do this? And they said, as long as your manager is okay and our chief is okay, yeah. And so Matheny was in. Only people that knew were Matheny and our travel secretary, CJ. And then the cops came in before BP, and I'm the only one in the whole clubhouse that knew. And they had texted me, so we're coming. So they took a bag of oregano. And they said, <laughs> they told Jay, they said, John, can we see you? And we need, my, Matheny comes out and goes, John, we need to talk to you in my office. So John walks in and the cops are sitting in there and the cops are like, Mr. J last night, we flew in from somewhere. I don't know, maybe I don't know, Cincinnati or somewhere. And when you cross the state line, the dogs, the narcotic dogs smell your bags and they detected a drug. Can we search your bags? And we're not allowed to search until you give us our, your permission. And John's like, sure, go ahead, do whatever you got to do. So they had a bag of oregano and they put on a whole shelf. They're throwing clothes and throwing bats. And they get to the very end, and the guy reaches down the bottom of his bat bag, and he pulls out this bag of oregano. And John Jay just turns like, oh! <laughs> right? Yeah. And they're like, we're going to have to arrest you. And John's like, what? Wait, what? It's on my eyes. Where? So they cuffed him. And I'm standing in the back corner watching, and I'm looking at the whole Cardinal space. And, like, Wainwright, Pat Neshek, I mean, Lance Lynn, these guys were scared to death. They're like, oh, my God, he's really going to jail right before the game. And they cuffed him and took him in Matheny's office, and they're talking to him. And they, they, he gave some crazy answers to some questions, right? <laughs> and I walk in there after about three minutes, and I'm like, I got your ass. And he's like, what? <laughs> what? And I'm like, I told you I was going to get you. He's like, what? I should have known this is all bullshit. <laughs> and then he got a hit. Like, the first at bat, he got a hit, and he put his hands behind his back like he was being cuffed. Wow. Yeah, it was great. 
Damn. So every time John Jay still sees me, he puts his hand behind his back. That is good. Yeah. That's funny. And then we and then we got Chase Darno with the same thing. You got Chase Darno too? Same thing, yeah. When? Years later? A couple years later. And did he, he do something it wrong to you? John. Huh? Did he do something wrong to deserve this punishment? It was just a <laughs> it just annoyed the shit out of me. That's what he did situation. Well, he used to like he had like a band. We're we're out there playing and listen, we weren't very good. But he had the Chase Darno band, and he played pregame at six o'clock out in the outfield in Atlanta, and we had a game at seven. He was playing. He was in the band playing <laughs> lead vocalist before a game. Yes. <laughs> no. I swear. I swear. I swear. We can get him that? on. He. I mean, he we, would admit. He's a great that, dude. I think he's awesome. Sure. But it was. It was just like, dude, you got to focus on one or the other. And he's like, no, I'm a band and a baseball player. I'm like. Pick, you're gonna have to pick one at some point. I mean, off day, off season, no. you can get after during it, but... the season, during before a game. Who was your manager? Freddie Gonzalez, I think, or Snit, one of the two. And they said that was okay. I mean, the the listen, we were awful. The PR was matter. trying to get anybody to come to the park they could. Chase Darno band. As an active player. Real As story. an active player, go- Google it. Yep. And then he went. He got. He ended up getting released by the Braves. Went to St. Lu- uh, San Francisco. And Ron Woda sat him down. Was like, you got to give up the band if you want to be a baseman. And he did. And he had a good career. In the yeah. Bears. Yeah. No, I hey, follow your dreams. But if you have a game to play, this isn't like off day. <laughs> hey, off day, come to the ballpark, or hey, in the off season, whatever. Like, you got a game coming up. Dude, that conversation was had by a lot of us. Frenchie, I think it had to be Frenchie, me. I mean, we just, I mean, I've been there. Yeah, it was. Wow, that's news to me. Yeah. On that note, we got some great stories for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Immaculate Grid time. Everyone's favorite. You ready to play, everybody? Let's hit the gritty. Yep. All right, let's hit the gritty. Top row, Marlins, Rangers, 3,000 plus career hits batting. Left column. Dodgers, Angels, Red Sox. And this is not for money. This is not for anything else. So I like to do my disclaimer for the FT fam in the comments. If you want to play along, we might pick some of your names that you bring to the table. Okay? Because it's just a game. It's just for fun. (laughs) All right, let's play. I got a good one right out of the gate. Marlins, Angels, Matt Joyce. Nice. nice. I like that. Marlins Dodgers. Juan Pierre. Hold on. So Joyce got a, a little point nine. sub 1%. 0.9. Nice, That's crazy. great. Yeah, I love Wait, and I then love. what's your Juan Pierre drop? Marlins Dodgers, but we probably could do better if I did. You do Hanley? No, that's worse. That's going to be too common. Piazza? Too common? Mm. Piazza was a Marlin for two days or whatever. I mean, I love Juan Pierre. Yeah, I like Juan Pierre. Old okay. JP, beast mode. Steal, stealing bases like Juan Pierre, Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. I used to wear my hat under my helmet like it. Just because, because of Juan Pierre? 7%. I, just, I feel like I stopped in double A. Juan Pierre used to stretch with his glove in his hand. He used to wear his glove. He used to wear his glove. And we would stretch. We'd go through our stretching lines, and he would always have his glove on. Dude, Juan Pierre used to get to the park at like 11 a.m. and take fly balls and bunt. And I'm like, dude, what? You think? I mean, come on. He'd be out there running. And then he'd eat 17 ice creams and have a six-pack. That's why he can. <laughs> I've never seen that in life. That's why he can. He'd stay on the field for the last group of BP every single day on the road, too. Yep. He was best. He was, I love That's awesome. Here. That's awesome. He's one of the best. Starting to get some names from friends. I'm going to do one before other people throw names out too because it's a relevant name right now. So I don't know if that hurts us. Boston and Miami. Hanley. Kyle Bearclaw. Oh, that's that's okay. real recent, but I like it. That's why I, I'm, I'm almost even, curious oh, to see. Okay, 1%. I was like, are other people picking up on it that currently? But no, 1%. That's good. Can we, um, use, can we use AJ? You can. I mean, for Texas, Texas Boston. Boston. Let's do it. Yeah. Napoli. Yeah. 
Napoli was way more popular than me, though, in Boston. And point .4, four, baby. Wow. That's nice. Nice. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I mean, can, we use, can we use Napoli for the next one? You yeah. Could, yeah. Napoli, yeah, Hamilton, who else? Common, isn't it? That's got to be common. Common. Yeah. Oh, he's Josh Hamilton. I mean, he's, he's got to be common. DJ Wilson? What about CJ Wilson? Ian Kinsler? Jackson's Ooh. idea? Oh, Ian Kinsler's not a bad Okay, idea. Kinsler. Better. Yeah. My teammate that got traded was a Texas Rangers Hall of Famer. Beltre? Michael Young? For Rangers Boy. Dodgers. He got traded from the Phillies to the Dodgers. Michael Young? That's what Michael I mean, Young. Yeah. Sure. He was awesome. 30%. That's good. So like now for, we need here's our, my question. For three thousand plus 3, 000, kids, Yes. Like for Dodgers, can you use like Eddie Murray or Ricky Henderson? Yeah, anybody that played for him. Yes. So yeah. they don't have to have had, they don't have to have collected their 3,000 hit with the Dodgers. As far no. as I know, that is So I would okay. go one of those two, maybe. I like both I of those. I think Ricky. Maybe Ricky? I didn't know. I didn't know Eddie Murray Ricky for Boston. For Ricky for Boston, too, works. Can you do a player for both? No, one person. No. Okay, so which one? You want Ricky for Boston or L.A.? Who do you think Hold they on. remember Ricky more? I think Ricky for L.A. is pretty random. Okay, yeah, that's fine with I me. I mean, they're both random, but... Do we have another random one for Boston, though? Do you have another random one for L.A.? Well, you said Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray. I didn't okay. know he played for L.A. Yeah, just for a little bit. So of the let's end. do Murray, L.A. It's a lot of percentage. Whoo! That was way more than I thought it was, was going to be. 19? I guess way more. People know it way more than I do. Damn. You can do what about? Well, we already had uh, 20. Okay, let's see Ricky for Boston. There you go. Five. Not bad. There's not that many 3,000 hit guys, so it's hard. What about for the Angels? Rod Carew? Yeah. That's pretty common, though, isn't Hall it? Hall of Famer Rod Carew. Did Winfield play for the Angels? Yes. Any other randos with the Angels that ended up with them? Maybe, like, late career? A single season. Did you say Winfield? Did he play for the Angels? We got some Winfields. For a minute. Guess is here. So I, I like that. See that one? Because everyone remembers him as a Yankee and Padre. That's good. Let's finish strong. Winfield. 44. 44. 44. Winfield, what? 6%? Okay. Not bad. It's okay. It was like a nice job. We didn't yeah, crush sub ones. I'm proud of my 0.4%. Yeah. It's, it's on our top five. I think we've done this maybe six times. So it's in our top five. Yeah, it's because I didn't get any wrong. <laughs> true, true. It's probably in our top four. On. No, well, the, we had the the one with with Adam Jones and who was, I think maybe Lorenzo Cain was on, and it was wild. But let's slap hands, baby. Hold on, breaking news. I just got a text that apparently the White Sox are going to hire Chris Getz soon. Really? As? I'm assuming general manager. You just got a text that it's happening? It's soon, I was told. Why don't you tweet it? Looks like Chris Getz soon. Why don't you tweet it? I just announced it. Tweet it too. I can't confirm. I'm not, I, got, I need more than one source. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to post this clip then right now. It's second source. We're going to post this. To Twitter. Okay. It's the same saying, thing. I was, I was told that, I mean, I just got a text. That's my thing with, with reporting. I think reporters can be different from other people because you're allowed to say that. It's a freaking free speech of, well, hey, I got a text. Bob Nightingale reported it with the White Sox. It usually happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which so, confirms my conspiracy. Congratulations theory. to Chris Getz. And it's going to be a fun ride for him and the White Sox. I mean, I well, we had Ozzy on her at Legends Territory. And that he, will he be will, released. That will be up. interesting. We'll hear from we'll Ozzy hear again. Um, Legends Territory is coming out, I believe, tomorrow. So look forward to that. Kratz Hats, what do you got? This would have been – it's a longer discussion, 
Technically, I never played in a game for the Padres, but I was in spring training with them. Found this in the bottom of my bag. But they couldn't release me, or they couldn't, they couldn't send me down. I took my opt-out, so they either had to trade me or release me. So technically, they had to put me on a 40-man roster to trade me to the Astros. So was I a Padre as a big leaguer, yes or no? No. Did you no. appear in a game? No, I, I mean, Immaculate Grid, I know no, but was I technically a Padre? No. no. Was I technically a Red Sox? I dressed out for two and a half days. Were you on the active roster? Yep. Then yes. Yeah. But they had you on the lineup card that they submit. Yeah. Then yeah, you were a Red Sox. But I'm not on Immaculate Grid. You have to appear in one game. That is one of the rules. They change the rules on Immaculate Grid daily, so. (laughs) They gotta come up with Immaculate Grid minor league soon. Kratz, you can organize it. Just get your supercomputers together. Also, um, I'm, I think I mentioned at the top of the show we were in Philly. Did I mention Trey Turner at two homers? I don't even remember. You did not because we were talking about her. Okay. FT Muscles, Trey for two, came on the show. So, good job. Stay hot. Thanks, everyone. We will see you on Wednesday for our special hurricane coverage edition of FT Live. That could get dicey here tomorrow. <laughs> Kratz, you might have to carry it tomorrow because Scott's going to be under the desk. Scared, tugging his thumb. We have Kerry Carpenter Woo! and Jose Trevino joining us on Wednesday. Um, and Todd is back. And no, that's your bugaboo. I don't like gators. You don't like hurricanes. I like I hurricanes. I don't like hurricanes. I like hurricanes. You're obsessed with hurricanes. I'm not scared of them. I will stand I outside see AJ. for show. I want to see <laughs> AJ outside like, I'm here reporting from <laughs> Bay Hill. My gated community where nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really I'll, terrible. Yeah. And I'll, I'll send you some video. Tomorrow on the show, I'll have some video tonight in the backyard. Perfect. Perfect. I want to see Scotty in the background doing bicep curls. I will kill this storm. <laughs> <laughs>